Let's begin. Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. Uh, depending on who, well, it's kind of been a little slow on some places, but uh, in other places, it's been been cooking. It's been cooking, right? Especially with Nintendo and such. Uh, we do have one thing yeah. definitely to talk about for sure. Uh, in the fighting game. Sorry, were you gonna say something? Oh, uh, sorry. We eating well from Nintendo. Yes, definitely for sure. Definitely. Everyone who thought that the Nintendo Direct was gonna be a slog. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> shit. Yep. <laughs> Even even the the sports game, the Nintendo like sport, sports game wasn't was uh mentioned at some point, right? You know, but we'll get there. We'll get we'll get there. We'll get there. So hope everyone's been been doing good. Um, this is two eighty one of the Hypecast with yours truly as always, Sean, aka Hawk five two five, with my cohort as always, Zawa. Hi. Yep, we're both hanging in there in the uh, now. Uh, uh, I guess you could say summer heat, right? It's been, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's been warm for you for like a good uh, while longer or something. Week and a half, yeah. Yes. It's while, been warm and yeah. it's, it's it's one of those dumb, dumb warm that <laughs> you would do a small, small activity and then you just fall asleep or you take your nap. Mm -hmm. Wake up again, do your small activity, then take a nap. Yeah, and then when you actually have to go and sleep, you're like, I can't fucking sleep. I took too many naps. Mm -hmm. Or it's like too you hot. Yeah, sleep. it's like too hot to sleep or something, man. I think in one of those like, um, there's actually like a little ventilator thing for your uh for your bed. So like you can put you put it like under your blanket, and it actually like you can you can like suck um circulate the air, so that way. It's not like too sweaty or like, um, mm. you know what I mean. Like keep it dry and fresh yeah. under, yeah, under your sheets and stuff. I think I, I think I want to get one of those someday. But and it also works for winter too because it has like a heat, built-in heater thing. So yeah, you can definitely double it. At, I mean, you can use it for all year round. You know. But anyway, um, summer heat aside. Uh, we are gearing up for um, uh, July, you know, as June is uh, getting that much closer to the end already. Uh, and with that, we had um, more E three E three, think uh, what do you call it? air quotes, big air quotes stuff coming out. Um, yep. Yeah. So, including Nintendo, of course, but we'll get there in a bit. Like I said. Let's talk about fighting games. Let's let's let's, uh, let's get that out of the way. So let me go ahead and hit this. This battle is about to explode. All right, cool. So is it? Is it, sir? Yeah, right. It, it could also be a, a hint, maybe, maybe with the Capcom vs. SNK collection. Hmm. So we're just throwing it out there. Hmm. Mm -hmm. No, anyway. Um, let's talk about MK1 first, just a little bit. Because they did officially tweeted this out. <laughs> yeah, I like that picture right there. But um, more MK1 on Twitter said, We've, before we can release Farah as our next cameo fighter, we need a bit more time to make sure she can assist to the best of her abilities. Farah will now be available alongside Takeda's early access release on July 23rd. We thank you for your patience and we'll keep you updated. So. Uh, Farah has been delayed, unfortunately, and so yeah, um, she will. She technically will be coming out with te uh, Takeda instead of um, her slated date, which was like right around when uh, Homelander was released or something like that. Uh, which, speaking of which, I haven't seen too much on Homelander when it comes to competitive side of things. But then again, I haven't like really delved into it too much, so I could be wrong on that. But maybe it's just because he's too new for people to just like suddenly pick him up and try to win, win uh you know that prize money right so maybe it is a little too early for homelander to be like oh yeah he's good or, or he's bad or whatever so yeah uh i have seen some early footage or not early but like i have seen some online footage of people beating others with homelander so yeah i even saw like yep. the uh like a brutality and stuff like that with homelander so you know 
it's all minor right or it's it's a new dlc character you know they have that little how many honeymoon phase and then we'll figure it out whether he's up in there in the uh competitive side or not but yeah anything on your end when it comes to homeland homelander or or not really uh from what i've seen with homelander he's cheap <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yeah, he can, yeah yeah you can just if you're here he's just going eh, laser laser mm -hmm. Laser. He has like flight cancels, I think. Um, he has like ways to get, literally ways to get around you. You know, he's just go. I think he just goes up and just like, um, comes back down stomping or something like that. Kind of like with uh, uh, what's his face, Goro, with the stomp, or uh, what's it? What, what was his face, uh, Shiva? Well, not Shiva. Sorry. Um, the chick with the uh, the four arms. What what was her name? Um. No, it was a Shiva. No, I think it was Shiva. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got it. Shiva and Goro and um, I forgot the tiger one. Oh, Kentaro. Yeah. Yeah. Kentaro. Yeah, I think uh, Shiva also has like the stomp as well. So kind of like that sort of archetype sort of move. But anywho, uh, so Farah's delayed again, unfortunately. Uh, or again, excuse me. Farah is delayed. Not that she was delayed before. Um, Takeda though they hinted at Takeda, so yeah, he's coming. They're they're cooking they're cooking up uh, Takeda hopefully. So I do I do look forward to what the, they've done to him. Um, the only thing we've seen, of course, is just that little snippet in the story, and then I don't know, he got his like head chopped off or something along with the uh, the rest of the, the teens or whatever during that uh, very brief appearance at the end. So, but uh, that could be just like a different Takeda from another universe thing because we all know we all know what happens at the end. It's like it's a big universal battle thing across different timelines and all that stuff. So yeah. <laughs> those could those could have been like the bad universe uh bad timeline teens or whatever. I uh you know who knows. Anyways um Takeda uh will event hopefully will be revealed at uh um probably pro uh well hold on. this is july 23rd right so that's like right around uh evo time if not yeah it's like a few days after evo because evo is um the 19th to the 21st so yeah oh wow is that that's, we wanna see. that is a lot earlier than i thought um or yeah yeah because I, I always thought it was like right at the end of july but i guess um yeah Traditionally, I think. Anyway, so that's going to happen eventually. So let's get a move on to Tekken real quick. Nothing big. Just a little costume thing in the store. You can actually um, dress up um, characters like uh, Reina. Characters. Yeah. yeah so Reina, Reina as is, um, yeah, Asuka. Yeah, like basically yeah. looking like Asuka from WWE and such like that. Another like ref uh, wrestler references uh so that's pretty cool you know uh, i believe this is this should be they should work for all or um like you know for example in this one this should work for all the female characters just so happens yeah. that yeah like reina and the us you know asuka kazama uh would fit into this uh the uh the us the, the wwe asuka very well yeah. you know yeah, it's called the Wonderful Wrestler and Dangerous Rapper Pack. So it should be available. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a funny name for it. But um, yeah, it should be available now in the store. So if you want to pick that up and make them or make certain characters look like uh, WWE Asuka. Yeah. From what I can understand, uh, recently uh, Asuka did have some sort of surgery. So hopefully she is uh, recovering yeah. well. Yeah. I think she either tore something or she has some sort of injury or she she just wanted to um just take care of herself so yeah get something fixed so hopefully she will recover and uh make her return to uh WWE at some point all right so that is it for that if we don't have any comments let's get on to the big one here which is Marvel so Marvel versus Capcom Marvel, Marvel. Or Mabel. <laughs> Marvel vs. Capcom did get um, a collect uh, 
some collection announced, some sort of collection, collector's edition, not not collector's edition. I'm sorry, um, a fighting collection of sorts, and um, now that that does come with some sort of uh, caveats and stuff like that, but we'll get to that. Yep. Um, I, in fact, I'll even open up the the uh, Nintendo thread, which we will definitely yep. take a deep dive into. Um, later on but let me just go ahead and skip right into um mvc collection yeah the main yeah the mvc uh collection i think it was like more towards the end if i'm not mistaken it was like yeah either more towards the end or in the middle so let me see it has to be somewhere um for everyone buffering Is it buffering? Yeah, but for everyone, it, it was for like uh, two seconds. Okay. We're good. But for everyone that is happy with Mar the Marvel vs. Capcom um, fighting collection, please buy it. Yes. If you really want to see another entry into the Versus series, the Capcom mm -hmm. Versus series, buy this. Yes. Yes. So what this... And, yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I mean, yes, we we had our chance with Infinite, but that's Infinite. It's yeah. It's not a true. It's not a true sequel in yeah. my eyes because it doesn't have a. a it's a, a spinoff. Yeah. yeah. It's a spinoff. At this point, like yeah, they're trying. They were mm. trying to make it the next thing, but it did not became the next thing. Let's just put it that way. You're you're not that you're not it, my guy. My <laughs> no, guy. unfortunately not. As much as much as hard work they put they did put into um the actual game, um the marketing, the PR, the uh the um sort of the choices right by uh Disney and M the MCU side of things did really screw up um a lot of what Infinite could have been. So could have been mm -hmm. the um. As you were saying with the PR, throwing um people under the bus. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. See, I I don't need to worry. Um, wait a very long for this collection. I already I already have my copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> PS2 motherfucker. My PS3 still has my PS3 still has a digital copy of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. So, uh, but I don't want to bust out my ps3 i don't want to replug in all that all the cables yeah, and whatever. you don't want to bring up bring out that fucking five pound baby i know right the the dust collector and all that stuff the dust magnet you know what if this thing still works mm -hmm. the memory card i'm sure i'm sure yeah <laughs> it's analog so it should it should work that's the magical thing about it anyway so this collection does feature um X Men: Children of the Atom, Marvel Superheroes, X Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel Superheroes vs. Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom. This is more of a familiar territory. Marvel vs. Capcom Two, and then for some reason they, they they threw in the Punisher. I'm not sure why they did that. Unless like is it from the same devs or something? Is it like I don't know. I'm not too sure. Um, maybe to like rounded up or something with the numbers i am not too sure because that, that's like what five six seven i don't know maybe seven that sound like sound a little better i have no idea it would have been funny if they put um capcom or Mar marvel's capcom 3 in there just for, you know just for you know for he -he -ha -ha. He -he -ha, he -he -ha -ha, yeah exactly um although that would Actually, be the only yeah i would back my ass off if they put this game in ah Wrapped it correctly. Oh my god. <laughs> the fighting evolution. <laughs> oh my god. That'd be so funny. But I'm afraid it's like, what is this game? Don't play it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, don't play it. Yeah. Um oh, Yeah, fighting evolution is just something else. Let's just put it that way. But um, yeah, so so Punisher is thrown in there for some reason, but I personally don't know why. Um I think they just needed to have um a uh a not you know fighting game. 
I guess so, but why Punisher, right? Like, it could have been, like, Final Fight or something, right? But... Final Fight, or it could have been, um... I mean, we already had it, but, you know, Puzzle Fighters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so that end there, maybe. But I guess they wanted to keep it a little more Marvel, and this is, I guess, the, the, the only Marvel uh, beat-em-up game that was made by Capcom. So maybe that's their sort of justification. Mm -hmm. But yeah. But yes, the, for those who don't know, the X-Men, the Marvel superheroes, and X-Men vs. Street Fighter, all that stuff is all part of the versus Capcom series. It is made by mostly the same people, at least, at least around the time, um, believe it or not. So yeah, so the it's it's funny, right? The versus Capcom series starts off with X-Men, right? So that's, a, that's actually pretty uh, funny. You can even see it with the sprites, so you can definitely tell, like, you know, what, you know, what, what came, came from from where and all that stuff um i've actually played i think i've played superheroes uh, versus yeah superheroes versus street fighters so that's like the farthest i've gone um in this lineup here i don't think i've ever played children of the atom i don't remember playing superheroes maybe i want to say maybe for x-men versus street fighter but i do recall playing um marvel superheroes versus, versus street fighter for sure are you in the same similar situation or have you actually played the other three games at some point? No to Children of the Atoms. Yes to Superheroes because okay. my friend had it on the PS1. Uh-huh. Expansion versus Street Fighter. Um my uncle had it at his house. Mm -hmm. Marvel Superheroes versus Street Fighter. I only played it in the arcades. Yeah, that, that that's where I played it also, yeah. Uh the first Marvel versus Capcom. Cousin had it on on his system. I think mm -hmm. it was to Dreamcast. Yeah, this one I played at the arcade. Marvel, yeah, yeah. Marvel vs. Capcom. <laughs> Marvel vs. Capcom Two yeah. was both arcade and home. Yes, I also with a shitty ass copy of it. Yeah, I I did play this in the arcade as well. I got my ass whooped by this uh, at this point to the because uh, like I don't know, man. The, uh, more more of the. Uh, I started to see, um, I want to say some of the people from the FGC, but I've never, I, 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 I didn't, um, I didn't know, I didn't know any of them at the time. I was a kid. I was a fucking little kid, um, in the, uh, Marvel versus Capcom 2 era. So I'm glad I, I wasn't part of that. I, you know, like I'm, I'm too young. <laughs> so this, this man was a youngling and he was going against Anakin. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I was a youngling against, yeah, against a bunch of Darth, uh, Darth Vader's essentially. So, yeah. Yeah. There's a whole, and there's a whole, I'm not sure. I, yeah. I never played. I never played. Yeah. I never played it either. So to be fair, but Hey, Not this game, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, this could be the first, right? This could be the opportunity for me to at least play the Punisher. Just, you know, like, relive that time, you know? Mm -hmm. um, the only weird thing for me is that it was announced here on Nintendo Direct of all places. It's not. It wasn't announced at, like, Evo. It wasn't announced at, like, PlayStation or Capcom's own little presentation thing. It, it was here in Nintendo. Like, I wonder why, right? Why Why here to make to break this news, right? It's just be it's just because they wanted to reach try to reach to the Nintendo audience because they know that's like a big um, demographic they want to cover as well hmm. as the FGC, you know. Yeah, I don't know. It could also be that the um the ROMs for these games probably was um, super friendly to switch hardware mm -hmm. maybe yeah perhaps yeah but we have to remember that this, this is also coming out for ps4 not ps5 oh, but ps4 yeah. and also on steam so let's not forget that but yes the, uh, no good Xbox. <clears throat> yeah <clears throat> so, so, that, so sorry <clears throat> something was in my throat yes so there they, they, then then comes this which is the whole no xbox trend that's been going around on twitter for um the marvel's capcom collection um yeah, so it's like, um, it really comes to question, right? Like, what's going on with Xbox? But I think, um, well, what, what you know, people, oh, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. I was going to say, I think it's, it's because Sony, it, 
Sony has, I believe, if I read it correctly, Sony has a distribution um, rights to some of the Capcom games or something like mm-hmm. that. So, so it's like a monopoly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The reason why so um, Nintendo is able to do it because I guess Sony and Nintendo are kind of best friends right now. Probably, especially with the whole like the Lego Horizon thing, you know. Maybe that could that could be a sign of sorts. I think that I mean, but I think there might be something going on with Microsoft for sure. Besides the rights, maybe there is something else. You know, the Capcom is seeing that we're not able to see. Uh, but it's also weird because I think, if I'm not uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, let me let me even go back to let me go find the uh, the Phoenix Wright stuff. Um. Yeah, Ace Attorney Collection. Yeah, Investigations Collection is available for also from Microsoft. So this is so this is fine. But yep. when it comes to Marvel versus Capcom collection, not so much. So maybe it does have to do with um the Marvel thing, maybe like the Marvel's Capcom stuff is a little more affiliated with PlayStation or something. I, I I'm not. I, I could be wrong on that part. It, it might be more on the at Marvel side of things. Maybe. <laughs> this this uh, Ace Attorney you know, collection comes out a day before my my B day. Anjobi <laughs> Yongan. Mm, right, right. That's Am funny. Am I gonna get it? Probably not. <laughs> but, Hey, but but for the Ace Attorney fans, I'm sure they're uh, they were yep. pretty pretty happy to see this. So, because um, this is the uh, the the at the time Japan only side of things, but now this is coming over to um to the, to the states. So that's uh, actually really cool for the uh, the Ace Attorney fans. So I'm happy for them. But anywho, back on to Marvel, Marvel. The reason why. You know what you know people might think like why, why are people you know people f- freaking out about this so much right uh one reason is that um the last time we could buy marvel 2 on console was back in 20, uh, 2013 before they took it off the ps3 store so yeah um there was there was some like distribution hell like with um with the whole like licensing thing especially with marvel right and disney you know um that was that was a nightmare so um or that has been a nightmare rather so we couldn't even like have access to marvelous capcom 2 for a good amount of time that's why physical copies of marvelous capcom 2 were like mad expensive um around that time uh zawa uh uh, has shown it off time and time again you know so he is one of the lucky few to have one essentially without having to you know uh sell an arm and a leg Right. 80 bucks. <laughs> yeah. I think I bought this at GameStop for $80. 2010 ish. Mm, yeah. Right around the, yeah, 20, 2010s was, was a pretty interesting time. Um, so, yeah, basically, it was, uh, these were very, very scarce. And that is why Mars Capcom, uh, you know, collection is uh, pretty important so uh, not only th- not only that i mean marvelous capcom has always had a place in a lot of people's hearts and even someone like michael b um uh, michael b jordan right loves the marvelous capcom series especially two so you know kind of goes to show like uh, how much it touched uh, people's hearts back in the day um just because you know it's like marvel and capcom coming together and fighting fighting and such like that you know um, it, it, you know, if X-Men vs. Street Fighter didn't do it, Marvel's Capcom absolutely did, you know, and just in case. Obviously, Mar- uh, X-Men vs. Street Fighter also has a place in people's hearts. Same with X-Men Children in the Atom. That's like more of the old school players, obviously. Some Marvel superheroes, same thing. But, um, specifically Marvel Cap vs. Capcom and Up, that's where it really, like, cemented itself as, like, that cool, awesome cross uh crossover fighting game you know there was nothing like it at the time which is why it definitely like it like cemented it 
in itself and so many people's minds and hearts and all that stuff and that's why people you know very much look at the look at these with rose tinted goggles at times and blah 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 you know all that stuff so um yeah i mean and, and the franchise of itself has been through hoops and ladders and ups and downs and all that stuff um there's still that strong love for marvel's capcom 3 or ultimate marvel's capcom 3 rather um and then when infinite came out you know people were trying to make it work but it just quite did not stick it as well as mvc3 or umvc3 um it just it, 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 and of course disney had a lot to do with it unfortunately so um that put a um a pretty long nail in that uh coffin there for for infinite pretty uh, you know forever be cursed um until you know we talked about this uh a while back um one of the modders is working their butt off to uh, make the game look really good right and along with you know the commissions and the sort of the financial backing of maximilian right um and direction um that has been coming out you know pretty damn good makes you makes one wish that was the direction they went right what in terms of the graphics and everything i think you know you know um graphics are so important for video games and there is no exception for for fighting games like you want to have stuff look cool when you do stuff right especially for fighting games you know and that is why Marvel's Capcom Infinite got memed on so hard, right? Especially with Chun Li's face and everything, Dante's face, Morgan's face, you know, and everything. Um, a lot of people's faces in that game, really. That that game got done done dirty, um, altogether. Not to mention, there's more Marvel characters in Infinite than there are Capcom characters to this very day, just because, hey, you know, that's just how they operated, thanks to Disney. So anyway, sorry about that. Um, was there anything else you wanted to add when it comes to Marvel's Capcom? What 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 is, what is Marvel's Capcom to you? Like the this the, this whole franchise. What what is it to you, right? The dream team that you can make. Yes, absolutely. I mean, yes, you got your your your, your top tier dream um, teams, but with games like with stuff like this, you know, you get to actually play like characters you wanted to play as and just yeah. fight mm -hmm. make your little scenarios you can, yeah you can like paint like the, the 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 uh little fan fictions in your head like your head cannons and and there's already there's already some a lot of head cannons that a lot of people like like you know the whole thing with spider-man and morgan i mean um you know what Let, let's take a look at the art like hold on let me see um mark man mark man has the uh the high quality stuff so and i'm like looking at excuse me all the um the games that's in this collection like mm -hmm. what if i wanted to just buy it you know like on ebay right everything before marvelous capcom 2 it's going to range you from like 50 to 150. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, not bad. I mean, it's used, but you know, not bad. Yeah, in comparison to other games, yeah. But this motherfucker mm -hmm. used what? number two used. You're looking at the the cheapest, one hundred ninety four. Oh man, that's that is just so. Some things is saying that this game was the pinnacle of everyone's childhood. Mm hmm. Yeah. It, yeah. And if yeah. you wanted a, a sealed um you know PS2 version of it, it's mm -hmm. 230. Mhm. Mm <laughs> yeah. That that's that's that is wild. It is fucking wild that of how much they would they are trying to sell this stuff, you know. Um trying to get it. Okay, there we go. This is a pretty good one. So yeah, like you get like look at look at look at just these two alone, right? Like look how look how happy they are to see each other again. You know what I mean? Like they it, they look like you know those those friends that have seen each other in high school. Mm -hmm. There's that meme going around of a video of a, an Uber driver um, picking up someone and realizing 
that it's a friend that have that that he, he has not seen in like 20 years mm -hmm. or something and i haven't i haven't seen that reaction but like just that alone is like i can already tell like that's going to be a pretty magical feeling and that's just kind of like what this is essentially like it's just like years and years and years of just like nothing and then um you know they're kind of like in their own corner and everything like you know street fighter 6 came out and you have like the marvel movies you know kind of being cooked being cooking in the back right and then you have x-men 97 and then but then now you got this right you know they're, they're back together the boys are back you know yep mm -hmm. um and look at the ladies right look at these the, the two ladies you know uh, chun lee we got psylocke right here you know um Psy the psylocke when i saw that when i saw this psylocke i'm like oh oh man i always thought psylocke was like like smoking you know uh, especially when when she's drawn by capcom artists oh man you know same with rogue i love rogue drawn by japanese artists oh man Rouge. Rouge, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, hey, we, we were kids. Some of us pronounced it that day. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're not wrong there. You're definitely absolutely not wrong there. Um, I just like Mark. Mark again um, has the fuck me eyes. Like, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I know you're dating MJ, but hi. <laughs> yeah, I do feel like Morgan and Spider Man, like, oddly enough, makes sense because of what uh happens in the Sp spider-man comics you know what i mean like with the with the girls and everything especially with the uh what's her what's her name uh was it black cat or something like that or yeah, Philippe? Yeah, black cat and gwen stacy gwen stacy of course mj right which uh okay sorry <laughs> for people saying that mj is the best um girlfriend for peter it's like no she's not <laughs> depending on i mean she is but overall mj's not a good is not good with Peter. She's yeah something. It really depends like on which best? comic you're looking at too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But to me personally, the best like um girlfriend that he had was Gwen Stacy and mm -hmm. uh, Felicia Day, aka Black Cat. Yeah, yeah. But again, with Black Cat, you gotta be careful which comic you're reading. Cause yeah. She's a bit older, and Spider-Man is still in his teenage years, and mm -hmm. she kind of calls him out on it. Yeah. Right. But in this universe, it's funny, you know, that it's always like yeah. Spider-Man paired with Morgan. You know, it's it's funny. Um, but but for me personally, as head canon, I I think Venom is kind of jealous because he's like hands off. I've seen I I actually seen Venom and Lilith uh, drawn together recently, so that's actually that's actually like kind of a, a very interesting dynamic that they could potentially keep going with, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because first off, Venom is massive; he is bulking, right? But Lil Lilith tends to come off as like a more petite person, in, 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 yeah, yeah, more in, especially in, in comparison to Morgan, you know. So that whole that that of itself is a pretty funny contrast. So right, yeah, so that's why if 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 Venom was gonna you know fight Lilith, I'll, I'll be like, I got this, honey. <laughs> I'll do this for you. <laughs> of course, I'll I'll take I'll take it. I'll be the sacrifice. And um, it doesn't even yeah this this whole thing doesn't even come off as like yeah you oh, they're they're like they're like fighting to the death or anything like that they're like you know they're, they're like rivals right they're like friendly rivals maybe with the exception of Bison and uh, Doctor Doom but even well, then it's funny with, yeah um, that you mentioned Bison and Doom from this picture is like Doom is staring hard at Bison but Bison's mm -hmm. like yeah <laughs> he's looking at someone else <laughs> he's got his eyes he's got his eyes on somebody else I don't know who it is but yeah. It's funny that there's it's like, Thanos. Bro, it's yeah, like, bro, I'm right here. Mm -hmm. I'm right here. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I love that Thanos and Akuma are like are like in the are like that uh equivalent. You know, they 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 put these two on that same level almost. You know, because you know, also, yeah. I mean, it, props to mm -hmm. the artist mm -hmm. not falling into that stupid trope of blue versus red or you know fucking. There's color. 
there there is red and blue let's not let's get that let's, let's not get that wrong but it's not like it's not like it's like taking over the straight, yeah, yeah. Like, like straight down the middle mm -hmm. it's like no mm -hmm. like you you see hints of it right like with um captain commando and then you see captain america you know because look at captain america's like uh, shadow or highlights or whatever it's you see the red yeah, and then you know, of course, you know, it's bison. Not, it's yeah. not beating. It's not beating you over the head. Yeah, it's not. It's yeah, not right there. Yeah, it's not the majority. You know, because because uh, Chun Li and Psylocke are neutral. Like they're they're not. You know, they're not taken over by the blue or red. They're like in the middle. Um. But yeah. But anyway. So yeah. Um. I love I love the 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 what do you call. Them? Z Zangief and uh, Venom being kind of rivals in a, in a way for this bit. But Mega Man, Ma Mega Man and Iron Man have always been sort of like paired together. I don't know if they're, um, they're rivals, quote unquote, but they've always been like friendly towards each other because obviously, you know, robot, robot suit, you know, that sort of thing. And then when it comes to more up here, it's like kind of cobbled together. Like, yeah, he's got Wolverine sort of up there. Um... And then Storm, Strider, and then the uh, Trombone on the other side. It's weird because in the past, it's been Wolverine and and Ryu being like the poster boys and such. But I don't know. The, Cy Cy Cyclops is taking over. Cyclops is taking Wolverine's spot for this time. You know? Um, I mean, well, when it came to like... Um... Marvel superheroes versus Street Fighter. That's the whole um, handshake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I just tweeted it out. Uh, with that gif so you, right you, here. You, yeah. yeah. Like yeah, even though like even though yeah, even though back in the day, they put these two together right with Cyclops and Ryu, but for the people right, it's like people think of like thought of more of like Wolverine and Ryu being especially in uh what was it called um. Marvel's Capcom 3, but to be fair, only Wolverine made it up to two anyway. So we, we did not see uh, Cyclops in there in the official lineup. So that uh, uh, that definitely did not help to paint. Cyclops was not worthy. Yeah, at the time. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> now he's back. Yeah, this, um, especially with um, what I've heard ha has happened with 97 uh, with Cyclops. So, uh, you know, don't, don't, don't say anything. I haven't seen it <laughs> yet. I, I do want to watch it at some point. Um... So, uh, I think there, uh, I think that's pretty much the majority of it that we covered. Yeah. That's, that's all the characters right there on this, on the poster. Mm. I, I love it. Um, so major kudos to the artist. Uh, it is definitely not Bengus for sure. It is somebody, somebody else, um, Japanese artist. But yeah. Major, major props to that, to that person. I like the I like the uh, these streaks uh, of light these light streaks they're like paint strokes but made into like very light like you know with the little slight rainbow to it this little paint splat on it like I love these little touches these little touches um really do help sell it you know and not to mention like storms like I don't know what's that supposed to be like ice or something ice lightning, lightning something. yeah. Ice, lightning, wind, maybe all combined together. I don't know. <laughs> He's gonna go. Oh, 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 oh. Mm. Lightning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're definitely. Uh, you're gonna hear. You're gonna hear that at Evo. You're gonna hear that at Evo again when you get there. Uh, let me see. So, yeah, yeah. No, it's a really, really cool poster. All in all, I love. Like, like you said, like it's not like entirely red and blue it, it, it there are there are hints of it of course but it's like rainbows like look at like it's like the the spectrum right there's all these like big um hints of rainbow throughout the thing it's really cool i like it i like that doom's hand is down there but bison's hand is up there so more of that you know that contrast haha -ha, you know yeah i i like it i think it's a really really cool um Yep. artwork and poster like i almost want to like get this framed you know what i mean get this framed and well get get you gotta find the one that does not have the logo yeah, yeah. uh that should be um 
Yeah, this one. Something like this. I wonder if there's a bigger... No, that's not big enough. Um, but yeah, so some, basically something like this, but bigger, obviously, bigger resolution. Um, okay, never mind. That's, a, that's the only one. HD asset, okay. Okay, so let's just talk about like what it has, right? Because I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I know we're gushing over the art already and stuff. But um, let me see. Huh, this is interesting. So, anyways, so what this has is um, the jukebox of all the songs, including, you know, of course, Marvel's Capcom Two. Um, uh, and then it has a, an enhanced practice mode for, for, I'm assuming all of them, plus a safe state ability. This also has a rollback net code, uh, hopefully across all titles. Yes, of course, uh, game art re uh, resources and, uh, arcade marquee cards. So more of that art gallery stuff. Um, da -da -da, yeah, you see right here Yeah, this, this brings back memories, man. Like whenever you hop onto that machine and you have to like stare at the uh, the thing right here, the marquee stuff, just to like remember like what the moves are and stuff like that. Chun Li, I I couldn't I I I did not understand the charge thing at the time when I was a kid. Like I did not understand what the hell that was. But all the all the like these motions right here, yes I I yes that's why I picked Ryu or Cyclops or you know Wolverine and stuff like that. I've never picked Chun Li or Charlie or you know any of those charge characters because I. At the, as a kid, little uh, as a little kid, I did not we understand didn't have the patience. You did not pa have the patience, nor the understanding of the concept of just charging and fighting games at the time. So, <laughs> um, I ignore that for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, and then unfor unfortunately, there is no cross play for these ones, um, which does hurt it quite a bit. But I'm, I can imagine this is some, well, I don't want to pin it on just Sony, but they have been, they have been infamous for not having crossplay, you know, but, uh, yeah. So question is though, for you, Zawa, what are you going to get this on? Are you going to get it on the switch? Are you going to get it on your PS4 or, 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 uh, or steam? Yes, for physical. Because there is a physical you can buy <coughs> or pre order the physical copies mm -hmm. only for um, Switch and uh, the PS4. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gotta put it next to the collection. I kind of, I am tempted to get in on the Switch just so mm -hmm. I have that, like, that portability and such. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure there would be like a Brooks, the Brooks converter of sorts for my PS4 sticks. So that should work just fine. If I, if I, if I were to go and go ham on it, but I'll probably just pick it up on the controller and try to do it from there. You know? Um, yeah, but, uh, yes, you know, again, there is not on Xbox. That sucks. Um, it does have crossplay. That also definitely sucks. Uh, but I think I think this should do well enough. Um, just you know, I would say just buy the game and just play it for the sake of just playing it, not so much like oh I gotta play with friends. Just you know, just sit back, play the arcade modes, go through the collection, the music, all that stuff, relive the memories, you know. And you're also supporting uh, a franchise that de that deserves it, you know. Marv's Capcom, and that could also, you know, bring up interest again, reignite interests to um, possibly get Marv's Capcom 4 up and going once and for all, right? So hopefully that'll be a thing. Man, Children of the, Children of the Atom came out in 94, December 94. That is wild, man. It's been, oh man, that that's a uh, third. 30 years, right? Jeez. Damn, man. 30 fucking years, man. That is crazy. It's fine. Yeah, because that's, yeah, because, yeah, you know, duh, because uh, this came out when we were four, you know? So, man. Four years old, man. 
Marvel's Capcom 2 came out in 2000. That's, man. I, yeah. So I was 10 at the time. Oof, man. Good thing I didn't uh, evolve myself with the, the Marvel's Capcom 2 FGC. Jesus Christ. Because <laughs> those are some hardcore motherfuckers. Let's just put it that way. Especially during the years of um, Justin Wong. You know. Okay. So, anything else you want to say for Marvel's Capcom 2? You good. Yeah. We back, baby. Mm -hmm. We back, we back. It's a it's a very special game for a lot of us. Um, as much as we love to, like, you know, kind of open that can, we do have other stuff to talk about. But let, let it be known that this is a very special game for a lot of us, and that's why uh, when this was announced, of course, of, you know... It, of course, then you uh, one can understand that people are happy, you know, especially with, with what uh, has been going on with the history of this franchise, ups and downs and everything. So yeah, um, I think that is it for that. Yeah, that's it for the fighting games. Let's go into the frontline side of things. So let's go. Go ahead and step over that front line because, um, so Adobe, right? They've been infamous for the subscription thing. Um, very poor financial driven decisions that really make things hard for, um, consumers, you know, even for the pros, of course. Um, but of course for the, uh, the prosumers and your average consumer of Adobe, it makes things real hard to like, just stick with it. A lot more people have been falling off. Um, I've seen a number of artists I follow uh, falling off from from Adobe and hop on to like Clip uh, Clip Art Studio, I think it's called. Um, yep. I know I'm I, I know I'm in that situation. Um, I'm still I'm still trying to learn the ropes, but I haven't had a good like chance to really get to know the software, you know, but. Nonetheless, yeah, a lot of people have been uh, up in arms, and um, Adobe has been just making a lot of these just questionable choices, including the implementation of like AI stuff. Um, they even disclose a new thing where Adobe wants you to um, have your projects essentially in their cloud. So that, um, uh, what well, I'm assuming is to power the algorithm for the uh, AI stuff, but essentially they have access to your stuff. So, um, they, it's like, it's like very, very hostile in a way. Right. And, uh, and even on top of all that, when you do plan to quit the subscription stuff, they throw in a, a massive fee of such, like a very unreasonable fee. So with all that stuff, the U.S. government themselves, at least according to uh, More Perfect Union, is suing Adobe. It's accusing the company of harming consumers by enrolling them in the mo most expensive subscription plans without clearly disclosing the huge early termination fees that can reach hundreds of dollars. So, um, yeah, there's all this stuff, right? Um, let me just see if there's any other new information. Um, Yeah, this is past stuff. Yeah, I'm just wondering how much how much this is going to set back for Adobe. But anyways, it says that uh, the, the federal government began looking into Adobe's cancellation practices late last year.
in 2012 or 2012, depending on who you are, Adobe went from selling its creative software for lifetime use to charging uh, ch uh, users for a monthly or yearly subscription to its suite of products, including Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and others. The company's subscription model has been long frustrated creatives who are often forced to stay subscribed to Adobe in order to keep doing their jobs, right? Yeah, that's, that's a very, very... Um, common situation within this early this month adobe's new terms of service uh, were met with backlash after some interpreted the move as an opportunity to train its ai art on users art yeah see that like i mentioned um yeah any comments on all this so far we still have it I don't have my spoon, but justice. <laughs> I don't have a spoon, but yep, justice. Yeah, no, literally, yeah. The Justice Department alleges that Adobe hid early cancellation fees and trapped consumers in pricey subscriptions. So, whether they win or not, um, it does put a fire up um, Adobe's ass. Like, yeah, we uh, hopefully, you know that. They kind of like really uh, step back and see like what they need to do with their subscription plan and the whole like AI stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's more of like just because, you know, Adobe is tied to Apple does not mean, you know, they can just fuck around. Yeah. Which yeah. they did. They fuck around and they found out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you know, like that meme. Exactly what it is. They fucked around and too much. They cannot, mm -hmm. they cannot go back. <laughs> they cannot go like, oh, oh, we misstep. It's like, no. The U.S. government's on your fucking ass. Yeah, Good dude. Luck. Good luck. Good luck. Oh, yeah. I love Ross. Whoa. Get fucked, Adobe. <laughs> <laughs> 14k likes too, man. <laughs> shit's fucked. <laughs> yep, shit's fucked, man. Uh, sorry, I can get that out of the way. Um, yeah, charging a cancellation fee for a digital service is literally extortion. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, you know, pe people are in the majority of supporting the lawsuit. <laughs> yeah. Fuck Adobe. All my homies hate Adobe. Yeah. Yeah. It's clear it's cut. Weird, yeah. Like, the Adobe software was so good back in, like, what, our college years? Yes, our college years. Yes. <laughs> like, you, you, you bought the suite for, like, let, let's say 150 ish. And yeah. It was yours until, you know, the next suite comes out. And well, for me, because I, I was still, you know, a student, you got a discount, you know, for the upgrade. So, and then now look where it is. It's like, hmm. That's the cancellation fee? I didn't even know. What? $400. I thought it was going to be like a hundred, a hundred bucks, but no, it's four times what I expect. Wow, no wonder, right? Wow. So 400. By the way. That's 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 fucked up. That's I fucked. could with that with that $400, I could buy um four times uh the 187 Saint Quartz. Oh my god. In, in <laughs> FGO and still not get shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you bring it up like that? <laughs> anyway, so that you think that... I will spend four hundred four hundred dollars on fucking McDonald's? Hell no! I don't want to be in a coma. It's still food. <laughs> I rather use it at. I don't know if you have it in um Cali. Uh, Clovers, Clovers. It's that mm. joint now. I think I've heard of heard of that. I'm not sure if we have one in Cali, but. Anyway, yeah, fuck it. I'll, I'll, I'll go to um, 
the Jesus chicken and order like four hundred dollars worth of a uh, waffle fries. Yeah, man, four hundred dollars, dude, for an early cancellation fee. That is no, that is extortion. My God, good God, man. That's like you buying a switch and like change, like yeah, like, dude. At least what one that, or two games? That's a yeah, that's a switch in two games at least. My God, dude. That's wild, man. Yeah, you pay hundreds to just to cancel a subscription. Either way, dude, like a hundred, whether it's a hundred or four hundred, they're not supposed to do that, dude. That is that is so wrong on so many levels. Um you know what I mean? Like, it, what's even more fucked up too is that uh, Apple made it harder to um, access to your older Adobe software, man. Like, yep. Like it, it it sucks because I can you know I I you know I have CS4, I have CS5, but I can't use it because it's like, oh nope. sorry, you know the whole like what 64 bit software kind of bullshit or whatever the fuck. Um, so Apple also is kind of like um in the wrong there too, but yeah, Adobe. Just like that, that's like, uh, they, the fact that they do this on top of the cancellation fee, but the whole subscription thing is just, man, it is, a, um, it's just so wrong on so many of those levels, man. Uh, you know, a lot of this corporate bullshit, man, it sucks. It definitely sucks. Um, you know, hey, I'm glad I was able to find alternatives. So I have a clip art studio for the art part, and I have Pixel Mater for uh, my thumbnails on, and also my the photo editing stuff and graphic design and such like that. Uh, well, simple graphic design, but yeah. When it comes to YouTube thumbnails, I've always used like you know Photoshop. It was like the greatest thing for that stuff too. But when, ever since they did that stuff. Yeah, it's uh, I I had to like I had to go through hoops and ladders just to do a number of those things. I I, I um had to had to use this like browser version of a Photoshop alternative or something. It's weird, but it worked. You know, but you know, it, it got me by. But same with um GIMP, I think it was called. Um let me see. If, uh, let me see if I have it on my uh, my library of software here. Yeah, yeah, I, like I had a. I don't know what you call. I had a screenshot of like someone saying like, if you're looking for Photoshop, here's the alternative. If you're looking for. Uh, uh, fuck, what's it called? After Effects, here's the, um, alternative. Like, someone made a list, like, here's the alternative. Yes. Want. Yeah. And... Sorry, I was, like, calculating. Mm hmm About, um, a large, a large waffle fries at Chick-fil-A. <laughs> And then multiplying by four or yep, with four hundred dollars is how much you can get. <laughs> how many of those well, it was like it's like it's three ninety nine. So you put Hawaii tax mm -hmm. equals four eighteen. Then you divide the four hundred by the four eighteen. I'll get at least ninety five large chicken Chipotle <laughs> waffle fries, all for me. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say all for yourself. <laughs> yeah. If someone gonna be like, can I have some? Like, no. <laughs> no. But you have enough. You have enough to feed everybody. No. <laughs> I those... did it for me, <laughs> not for you. Yeah. What's up? Well, aren't you gonna feed to your boyfriend? Fuck no. <laughs> Fuck. He has money. Get his own. <laughs> yeah. Fuck no. <laughs> No, I mean this. This ain't no charity. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, no, that's pretty much a lot of people said. Fuck no, man. I'm sure when it comes to this whole Adobe situation. They've gone way too far, definitely now. Four hundred dollars, dude. I, I want to. I, I want to actually confirm that myself. Adobe cancellation fee. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Because I know with Adobe, they don't do like buy the um, program anymore like you can only buy if you just want photoshop you just do this and, and stuff no adobe is like no you have to take the whole entire package but i don't oh. use the other oh my god oh my god so for the so this is for, for the creative cloud all apps plan Three, so if you want to cancel, you know, it's like, all right, you know, it's not working out for me, blah, 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 right? After one month, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to cancel. Good luck paying the 320, the uh, $330 right off, right, right off the bat. Damn, dude. Of course, it, it goes down as you go, um, go along like 12 months, zero, but it, that's but that's like yeah it's like of course that's that has to go down it's like oh my god that that is fucked that's still fucked up whether it's three hundred dollars four hundred dollars a hundred dollars even it's like ah oh. the fact that you did the single app i want to see what the single app is about half so but see that will be reasonable <laughs> You think? <laughs> you think so? I mean, I don't know. I... Well, it, this would be reasonable if it was all the uh, the apps, because it's like twenty plus apps. I think. Well, I think the fact that they 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 didn't even clearly disclose this until after was like, man, that's that's. I like, I like trying to try to read that question. Why am I why am I charged a fee? Oh, up up up. Oh, why am I? Oh, yeah, yeah. If I cancel, and they made it like the most like, well, you see, it be, don't worry, your your purchase is with a significant discount. Therefore, cancellation fee applies if you cancel before the year ends. Ugh! What the fuck? I just I, I want I want someone to go like, well, the person that was using this fucking died. Mm hmm. <laughs> Then what? <laughs> yeah. So, oh my god. Your purchase of a yearly subscription comes with a significant discount. Therefore, a cancellation fee applies if you cancel before the year ends. What the fuck? I don't know. And it sounds like they're just smiling. That, yeah. This when is, they're saying it. It is a, essentially ex, kind of extortion. Yeah, it's like... Oh well, we give you we give we give you this discount. So if you plan to cancel, you have to give us uh back, or you have to give us uh in exchange for that discount or whatever. It's oh my god. That's when you you become Arnold from um kindergarten cop. cop. Mm -hmm. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Yeah. Like I get I guess maybe fifty dollars or yeah, maybe a hundred dollars would be like at the limit reasonable. At that very limit, right? But close yeah. to four hundred fucking dollars, man. Four hundred fucking dollars. And don't and it didn't even like this close that shit. Oh my god. The hidden cancel fees, man. Like, I, like I'm, I'm, I'm sure when you buy the stuff at the light uh, on your car and stuff like that, they don't even tell you that until after the fact. You have to, you have to type it in to find out. That's fucked up. Uh, annual preplay, prepaid plan, month to month. No. All right. Anyway, so either way, shit's fucked, but they get, they're getting fucked. So that's what they get. They definitely deserve it. All right. So, uh, oh yeah, I should have not closed the, um, the thread. But anyway, 
we're back here for the Nintendo Direct. Let's go through this. So, um, right off the bat, they announced a new Mario and Luigi game. So this is like a pretty much the, the spiritual successor for like those Mario RPGs, including Super Mario RPG, and featuring, of course, always a Mario and Luigi. Which I don't think uh, Super Mario RPG even featured uh, Luigi in that game. But anyways, yeah. So um, this one is called Mario Luigi Brothership. It's a brand new game, I think, uh, for the Switch, coming off from the uh, 3DS series, in hand or I should say handheld. Um, I think it also appeared in the GBA stuff or Game Boy Advance lineup, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. This is coming out uh, November November seventh. Uh, first off, did you watch the direct? At some uh point no <laughs> no work okay but did you watch it like after work like did you we did you yeah. catch up on it okay good. so that's that's what i'm asking like did you watch it at all um what, what did you think of the the entire direct as a whole way better than um some some of the other uh previous um like the state of play and then the xbox wait be better mm -hmm. yeah I, I mean to be fair i think xbox did a pretty good job they had a good lineup of yeah. games it's just that the whole like the layoff thing they put a sour taste on a lot of people's yeah. mouths but if we were looking at the presentations al alone i think xbox and nintendo um definitely won whereas sony kind of like eh, you know eh, you know right yeah that's why, like, the the state of play, they needed that oomph. Like, it had the oomph, but it needed the, the, the one that really, like, gets you out of your seat. Yeah. There was none of that. The, yeah, the, the, um, sort of those, like, yeah, the, basically, yeah, the, the ones that make you fly off your seat. Yeah, for sure. After that, uh, there was the Nintendo World Championship uh, sort of collection thing, NES edition. July 18th is coming out. Fairy Tale 2. Uh, I believe this is a. Uh, the first one was on the PSP or something, I think. And then I think this is also from the PSP. I, I have, uh, I'm not too sure on that one. It might have been on the Vita or something. Uh, let me go ahead and take a look, see. Um, game where's the wiki for this very till to announced oh i think i think the fairy okay never mind i'm i'm i'm, I'm i think I, I guess i'm mistaken i guess the fairy these these two fairy tale games have been um with the modern consoles. I thought they were like handheld games because they kind of look like it, right? With the the graphics and everything. Not the not the not the most mind blowing graphics. Um, it's definitely more on like that budget side. You know, as someone who 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 has read all of Fairy Tale, it's the main the main lineup anyway. There's the Hundred Year Quest one. I haven't I haven't even caught up on that one. Um. But you know, it's like it's like that 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 um, that anime game where they just want to shell it out and then try to make money. You know, it's like that curse from the early days with like movie games, right? You remember those those all those like movie games? Yeah. <laughs> that that's the 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 anime games are kind of like that right now. Like a lot of them anyway, especially with the Sword Art Online stuff. There are some good ones to be fair. There are some good ones for Sword Art Online. But a lot of those sort of, um, uh, a lot of them are kind of like that. They're kind of like that shovelware. They just want to just put it out there and make money, you know. And on top of, on top of the mobile games too, that too. And then it's not just sort of online, of course. It's even like One Piece suffered sort of uh, a number of that, and like uh, Bleach and Naruto and all that, all that jazz. Uh, finally, with Nintendo Switch Sports, after what two years or whatever, they finally added basketball for some reason. They still don't have baseball for some reason. It's so weird. Oops. Um, 
they don't they still don't have all the like old sports it's so weird and it's a free update like thankfully but it, it is coming out summer 2024 but the fact that they even like come out with this right off the get-go is like uh what like it's really weird you know why not why now anywho you know memories in orbit 2025 disney illusion island free update hello kitty island adventure looney tunes wacky world of sports um among us update essentially you have like new roles now you have like a phantom and noisemaker i think it was i i forget um like yeah it, it, uh, i mean for those for those who are still playing among us cool but i think this should have this should have been early on when the uh, when the iron is still hot you know farmagia farmagia is basically um a farming simulator you know kind of like a meme <laughs> farming simulator on the switch uh but this is designed or the art side of things is designed by the same uh, creator of fairy tale funny enough so uh, you can kind of tell by the art yeah same the, the stuff fairy tale farmagia um is designed by hero uh mashima and then, of course, one of the big ones was uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. It's basically running off of the, uh, you know, the Tropical Freeze, the, you know, those other games uh, engine. But with the, uh, you know, the Donkey Kong Country name and stuff like that, the formatting is essentially that. But, um, hey, I mean, it's a Donkey Kong game, I guess. But, uh, I mean, is it to say, like, it's a brand new Donkey, Donkey Kong game? Mm. A bit of a stretcher. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how, like, I'm not sure how the Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong fans particularly feel, but I'm kind of like in the um, the middle. I'm like, all right, cool. It's, I guess it's new, but it's just basically um, the Wii U Donkey Kong games, but with that, the country slap, the, the country uh, name slapped in there to me. You know, um, Dragon Quest 3, uh, HD 2D remake, which looks really cool. It's got, it's got that, like that, um, Octopath Traveler sort of look to it. Really cool. It's got like, it's, it's almost kind of like looking at miniatures. It's really cool. It's like that miniature effect. Um, coming out November 14th, also with, um, same thing. For one and two. So pretty sick for the uh Dragon Quest fans. Funko Pop Fusion. Oh man, this this also looks like shovelware to me. Man. <laughs> the uh yeah, um the guys in the Discord uh, kinda had a kick out of this one, because you know. <laughs> the the fuck <Funko> Pop. <laughs> I can I can hear them now. You can hear them laugh when you're not. <laughs> oh man, I, I'm sure you got some sort of kick out of it too. But mm. yeah, it, it's basically kind of like like Skylanders, like Skylander, like Funko Skylanders kind of kind of thing. See, it would have been potentially coolish if all the Funko Pops had some sort of like chip in them, so you can like scan them into the uh, the games or whatever. There, which is essentially like yes, amiibos, you know. Which I'm I'm kind of surprised they have not been pushing that gimmick uh, up to this point. Like it kind of like died off in a way. Like it's only like in Smash or something, and like a couple other games, a couple other major games, but very few in the last. I think they're they're slowly trying to phase it out. Maybe besides Smash, but that's about it. Anyways, there is a uh, Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, June 27th. No, 27th. So that's pretty soon. Um, uh, Dempa Men. Free to play. I think this is a uh, Nintendo game. Because it is using the Miis, but I could be wrong. 
Anyway, Metal Slug Attack Reloaded. This is a tower defense game. So pretty neat, pretty neat way to implement Metal Slug in that uh, sort of genre of format. Darkest Dungeon 2, July 15th. Uh, oh well, yeah, Attack Reloaded is already out, just so you know. Zelda Four Swords is coming to the GBA Switch Online portion of things. Same with uh, uh, Metroid Zero Mission. And on the Nintendo 64 side of things, Turok is there for the Mature 17 side of it. That's funny. They had to actually put that, make that clear. Perfect Dark featuring an online multiplayer. Have you ever played Doc Perfect Dark on N64? Once. Once. Yeah, same. I've only played it at like some somebody's house. I, it's, it's not. Yeah, that, that was me too. <laughs> very foggy. Played uh, us in one yeah. house. We kind of got bored, and we, then we just popped in Pokemon Stadium. <laughs> That's so funny. You put it like that. I, it's just one of those games. Like, I know there's a neat. You know, there's like a there's like that cult following for it, but I never like. I never fully got it. You know what I mean? Like it's, hmm. You know. I mean, there's a new new Perfect Dark game finally coming out, like or announced, but or at least finally revealed, and that was on the Xbox side of things. But yeah, because it's, uh, it's rare, right? Yeah, it's rare. Um, but I I don't know. I just, I, I'm just like, all right, cool. Like that's cool for the uh, the aud the the old audience, I guess, or people who like those games. But yeah, I'm just I don't know. Kind of like, huh? I'm 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 a, I'm a golden eye kind of guy, you know. Yep. It's essentially a not golden eye. That's what it is. That's what it was to me. And of course, there's Turok. I I played Turok for sure. Um. Phantom Brave. This is a almost like a, a it's like sort of like um this guy, but uh, I believe this is uh, emphasizing on the uh the monster capturing aspect of it so kind of like pokemon and then uh of course we talked about it the marvelous capcom fighting uh fighting collection arcade classics that was announced um on there super mario party jamboree this is essentially a uh sequel to the super mario party series right now and then that's coming out October twenty or October seventeenth, and it will have a online mode that will feature up to twenty players. Right, so it's kind of like a battle royale almost, if you want to think of it like that. New Zelda game. It's got that style from like uh, I forgot there was, there was another game that did this on the Switch. I forget what it was. I believe it was supposed to be a remake, but I guess it's supposed to be a new Zelda game featuring Zelda. Now, so it's like a little less confusing. So she's the new protagonist, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, okay, so it's called Echoes of Wisdom. So, pretty neat. Link has vanished. Zelda is the protagonist. Played on a top-down perspective. Zelda can recreate items and recreate also recreate monsters to progress through the game. So it's also like kind of playing around with that Pokemon thing. It's uh, kind of funny. September 26th is when it's coming out of uh, this year. And I'm, then... The, oh. I'm liking the memes with, with the Zelda game. Mm. It's like... Because <clears throat> now it's like the roles are reversed. Gotta uh -huh. save Link now. <laughs> so it's, so the one I saw was um Zelda doing the whole... um. I'm a doctor, but and she has like the gun in her hand. I was like, uh, oh. it's like damn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess Zelda <laughs> fucking over it already. Right. You know, it'd be you know, it'd be a really funny like complete reversal. Like, te if you want to be technical, shouldn't this be called the Legend of Link? Right. <laughs> or Lunk, Legend of Lunk. Lunk. No, shouldn't it just be, shouldn't it just be called Legend of Link instead because. When it's Legend of Zelda, you're mostly playing Link, rescuing her, whereas you're now you're rescuing Link, so it shouldn't just be called Legend of you know you know what I mean like <laughs> it's gonna like that little plot hole thing. Yep. Yeah. 
there's also a Switch Lite Hyrule Edition coming out the same day. Eh, you know, it's cute, but eh, you know. Looks nice. It's nice. Looks nice, but uh, yeah, you know. There, there is the Switch 2s over the horizon. So yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> you would want. Yes. Um, Just Dance, you know, you every year there's got to be a Just Dance game from Ubisoft. And then there is Hori uh, Lego Horizon Avengers. Again, this is the technically the first Sony IP making into a Nintendo game, technically. Um, unless you count... Well, Crash... Uh, Crash is kind of a weird one. Crash Bandicoot is kind of a weird one. Because it went multi-platform at some point, I think, right? Yep. But anyway, yeah. So, but but Horizon is like, yeah, that's that's Sony. But now that there's a game with a Horizon name, but with the Lego thing, yeah, it's it's technical. It's, it's a very technical thing. And yes, it's for the Switch. Uh, Stray is coming for the Switch, but it's like, eh. oh my god. <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 graphics. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's kind of like the Mortal Kombat 1 thing I, on Switch. I, I, I love you, PS5. <laughs> yeah. I love you. <laughs> yeah. Tales of the Shire, that's the Lord of the Rings game, I believe, right? That also kind of looks like kind of a bit of a shovelware. Yeah. Uh, We mentioned this one. Uh, Ace Attorney Investigations Collection. September 6th. There is um the new artwork version, but you can also switch it to um the original pixel version or pixel art version. So that's pretty cool. Uh Romancing Saga 2. That's coming out uh October 24th. Uh I think there was one more game. We we're reading off of uh, the War 64's thread, so I think we're missing one. But it wasn't anything major, I don't think, anyway. Uh, it was another JRPG, if I can recall correctly, but um, I can't name it right on top of my head. But anyway, the most important one, of course, was Metroid Prime 4. This looks like a banger already, especially on the Switch. My goodness, look at that. You know? They finally revealed the gameplay for it. Look at that. This is on the Switch. Like, Jesus. You know? They definitely, definitely cooked um, for sure for this game. Like when, from what I saw on the meme, like people are going, I <laughs> used um, white beard to hang it up, you know, use it. So yeah. um, one piece is real. Yeah. <laughs> Metroid Prime 4 is real. It's like, yep. it's like, you know what? I think, I think white beard will also be a Metroid player. <laughs> I, I think he would. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's called Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. Yeah, because uh, the Metroid, Metroid Prime games always has ha always had some sort of subtitling, like uh, Echoes, um, and so on and so forth. I forgot what the third one was called that was on the Wii. Um, or Wii U, rather. I don't know. Uh, let me go ahead. Pull that up. Metroid Prime. Okay, let me see. Um, trilogy. Trilogy? Let me see. Is that a good one? Okay. So, of course, there's Prime. Prime Echoes. That's Prime 2 Echoes. Prime 3 Corruption. That's what it was. Corruption. And then now we have uh, Beyond. So, right there. Uh, Comments on Metroid, though. What did you think of the game? Are you interested? Are you uh, drawn into it? Would. would would you buy it? Would you actually buy it? No. Oh. I mean, it's been a while since I played this type style of a uh, Metroid. So mm -hmm. would would yeah. And then I, and then you know the the big bad alien would. No, oh, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> what really? <laughs> I know. <laughs> It's like, no, you. What you should have said is like, was there even a doubt? <laughs> yeah, was there? Yeah, was there even a doubt? Yeah. Now this is coming twenty twenty five, so this does 
feel like hmm right i sleep now yeah because like uh you know it's like do it should i get this on the switch or the, the whatever the switch 2 is gonna be like you know what i mean i i expect this to be on the switch 2 like it's gonna be that game with uh remember with um like twilight princess well zelda games in general they've always been like that game that's like um Especially Breath of the Wild, because I think Breath of the Wild was on Wii U at the time, which is, oh man, that's a weird thing to say. But no, um, Twilight Princess has been on, it was on the GameCube, but also on the Wii at the time too. So I think this is going to be stuck in that sort of loop where it's like, yeah, you can play on Switch, but this is going to be a, uh, a whatchamacallit, the, uh, the Switch 2 version or whatever, I'm sure. And I'm, that probably is going to look better or cleaner at least. To the greater. This is already looking clean, though. That's crazy. This is a Switch game, too. Like, my God, you know? So it makes you, th makes you wonder, like, what would it look like on the better Switch, you know? My God, my goodness. So I think this is going to be more uh, open-worldy. Like, th they, they made it out to be, like, world open-world-ish. Because there's going to be, like, different levels or something. But I could be wrong. I don't know. Maybe I interpret that wrong. Yeah, it is real though. It definitely is real. It went through some uh, development hell because uh, I think they uh, had a Bandai Namco studio do it, but they're like, nah, we don't like how it's turning out. So we're going to give this to uh, Retro Studios, I think it was. Because that's the, that. well, guess what? That's the that's the studio that made all those other Prime games. So it's like, well, who the thunk, right? Like, what do you know? Um, So yeah. This is coming out pretty, pretty good. Coming out next year. So I'm pretty happy. Pretty damn happy about that. Um, Let me see. Yeah, so it just says Bandai Namco Studios in Japan and Singapore. And... Um, Let me see. Hmm. It doesn't exactly mention like oh they had to start start development over or something like that. But yeah, that's what it, that's what essentially happened. That's what essentially happened. Anywho, it is real. And that's how it ended. That was the last game for it. So, um, I would say, though, uh, it was good. But I'm going to be real. I'm going to be serious for a moment here. Most of the, like, these games and this, the rest of this generation at that are a lot of like remakes and remixes, HD ports. You know, like repeats, you know what I mean? Like, um, these collections and you know, all that stuff, right? For the modern consoles, that's what it's a, a lot of those games were, man. Instead of like actual brand new ones, um, and then like the the cycle is gonna repeat, like, oh, now you can get on the, the, the new Switch or the uh, or now you're gonna get on the PS6 or PS, yeah, the PlayStation 6. You know, yep. the the cycle is not going to end. You know, even, even like even for, you know, um, that includes, you know, uh, Marvel's Capcom fighting collection. You know, it, it, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a port. You know, that's another thing. And not, not, not to trying to bring down Marvel's Capcom by any means, but um, just saying that like, a lot of these games are just ports, collections and, you know, the the, the these like um these remakes like it's not it's, and it's not like you know final fantasy 7 remake kind of kind of remake that's a brand new game essentially right um because it actually like changed up the the game or the combat system and all that stuff and like the story is a little different or quite different i should say and like all that stuff so that's a brand new game to me but it is a remake in the sense that yes they are repeating the a lot of these major points of the story but it's a twist to it so I gave that exception, mm -hmm. but when it comes to like most of the remakes, they're like HD remakes, all that stuff. They're they're just HD glorified HD ports, you know. 
up res and yeah cleaner um some of them have better graphics like the uh i think the metroid stuff that's great you know but if we're gonna be real it's just that's just what it is it's just repeats for this generation as a whole And, yeah, when it comes to the actual brand new games, it's just, like, shovel. A lot of them are, like, shovelware or, like, lower budget games. Shovelware yeah. or it's, um, what's it called? Answering, you know, that niche audience. Yes. Yeah. Very, very niche. Right. Um, you know? Like, the, the Hello Kitty Island thing. It's, like, that's a niche audience yeah. that needs... That probably wants to play a Hill Kitty game on the go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, and you know, and I think that's a healthy thing, you know, but when the rest of the games are just like just ports and remakes and blah blah, blah like I said, it's like, yeah, you know. And then the the uh the actual new like new new games is far and few in comparison to before, or that's what it feels like anyway. It's like that that's definitely as disappointing, you know. And part of the issue is that uh of course they put way too much money in those games, way too much time, and that's why it gets delayed out the ass, and then like the development hell happens, staff gets all fucked up and with the crunch time and everything. It's too much. It's too much for what? Like for these games to look a little better or like whatever. It's like, it's like they I think they need they definitely need to dial back to let more of these games come out. And you can work on more new games. I think that's that's a large part of the reason why we get all these like ports and all that stuff. That that's because that's the easy, that's the easier shit, of course, right? That's you know that's pretty obvious. But at the same time, it's just they're doing way too much for these AAA games. Way too much. You know, they're treating they're treating these like these. They're like they're like movies. They're like um, these Hollywood movies. That's you know because that's what it is. Video games have gone mainstream. Have they got, made a lot of money? Sure, but they put they put a lot of fucking money, man. Yep. You know. And it's kind of like sad when you think about it. some of these games that are showcased today or during this um Nintendo showcase. Yeah. Hundred percent bet you. Or actually, let me tone it back. 87%, I bet you, was going to end up mobile. But they said, eh, fuck it. Yeah. Let's just up-res it and opt optimize it for the Switch. Yeah. No, I, I can definitely see a number of these games. Like like the uh, um, Metal Slug Attack Reloaded kind of thing, for example. You know, I mean, maybe not Zelda. That's like that's maybe a stretch, but like you know, some 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 of those games, like yeah, like they're going to be um, mobile, but they need more games on their whatever console, so they probably just try to uh, convert them into um, uh, console games, just to keep it afloat in terms of appeal and such. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I I think I think we need more of the smaller games, but with a little more budget. You know what I mean? Like, get get give some of that money to the smaller games, so that way they can get more flushed out. You know. See, if that was the case, I'm sure like Fairy Tale and some other some of some of those other games would have looked better, right? But they put but but um, a lot of that money is going into like. You know, like Dark Souls or like you know uh, Elden Ring and such like that. You know what I mean? They, um, more of those things kind of need to take um, s at least some of the philosophies of Godzilla minus one because that was like a lower budget movie, but they made it like so good. You know what I mean? Like yep. kind of thing. And uh, I think a lot, a large sum of that money does go into the marketing too so definitely they i think um that needs to get, get dialed back too as well 
if they can if they can of course but um some something needs to be dialed down for sure like it's a lot of fucking money for sure now are there should should there be some exceptions absolutely i think there should be some exceptions but it like these the it's a large sum of these triple a games it's that and that's i think that's an issue right that's why you don't you do you, you i think i think that's why that is happening here um like gta 6 that's gonna be a big one elder scrolls 6 that's gonna be a big one right you know uh what's another like game that's like been baked for long ass time uh I guess Star Citizen, if anyone remembers that stuff at all, if anyone actually has been keeping up with that whole story, like, geez. But anyway, that's kind of like my rant or whatever when it comes to these uh, games. Um, let me see if there was anything else. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh man. Yep. How the tables turned. So Yeah. That's kind of like funny. I did I just mentioned like the oh yeah, these these are remakes and then you have the one um a little more a little more niche uh franchise or uh, lineup getting the actual new game. Whereas um yeah, they could have been a new Paper Mario game. Which I think that happened, but... It, I don't know. I haven't heard too much about it. But but especially Super Mario RPG. They, they should have... I think there should have been a new game. A brand new game for it. Anyway. Um, we can definitely go on to something a little more serious. Which is, uh, for anyone is a fan of Dr. Disrespect, he has been, uh, now been, uh, alleged, uh, alleged for being, uh, a, pi a pedophile of sorts. Somebody who apparently is a former, um, employee at Twitch, uh, kind of like, Blew, blew the whistle saying he got banned because remember um there's a whole there was that whole banning situation with dr disrespect from twitch all of a sudden and we we're like what What's, what, what happened so this is probably this is alleged to be the reason why so he says uh from cody connors he got banned because he uh he got caught sexting a minor in the then uh existing um Twitch Whispers product. He was trying to meet up with her at TwitchCon. The powers that could be read in plain text. Case case closed, gang. No one made a wrong decision. F fuck him and his boys. That was the next little tweet he made. And that was all. That was all. That was all. Like, there's no evidence. There's no screenshot. There's, you know, nothing of the sort. So it's like, um... There's nothing confirmed. Yeah, where's the proof and all that stuff? But it's it's kind of serious, right? It's like it's like if you have a claim like this, you you gotta back it up, right? Um, and then somebody else says this. Oh, got deleted. Uh oh, oh, someone's getting in trouble. Oh, oh, somebody's getting in trouble for sure. Right. Uh, oh, this is for the next one. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, anyway, so. Let me t bring up uh, Dr. Disrespect. Yeah, there we go. So here was, was his um, response. Uh, let me see. I'm looking for the... Wait, this is the, let me see. Okay, I think this is it. Listen. I'm obviously tied to legal obligations from this settlement with Twitch. 
But I just need to say that, uh, say what I can say since there, this is the fucking internet. I didn't do anything wrong. All this has been pro, uh, pro and settled. Nothing illegal. No wrongdoing was found. I was, and I was paid. Elder Ring Monday. That was, that's, that's the entire tweet. Um, yeah. It's a it's a kind of a mixed bag right now. It's like, well, why did you say? Um, oh wait, this is a kind of a different one. He, he in another one he said, oh, um, it might be replies. Let me see. Oh, there we go. So there was a quote tweet, kind of like going picking back, uh off of uh cody connors jake says a former twitch employee has come uh, forward stated the alleged person for dr disrespect's permanent uh, twitch ban being for sexting a minor in a previous uh twitch whispers product and then this dr disrespect responds jake seriously i get it it's a hot topic but this has been settled no wrongdoing was acknowledged and they paid out the whole contract. So this is where it gets weird. So people were like, well, you know, why didn't you just say I didn't do it instead, you know, and instead it says no wrong wrongdoing was acknowledged. Right. And then they paid out the whole contract kind of thing. So it starts to get like very weird. It's like, okay, so you so that could imply that you did it, but it wasn't acknowledged as a wrongdoing. You know, it's it, it starts to get weird. You know what I mean? So um, I don't know if you caught wind of this at all, like recently, or uh, what do you make of this so, thus I far? It, um, like here and there, mm -hmm. but when it comes to Doctor of Disrespect, it's pretty much like. Um, <clears throat> you hear the noise, and then you just go right back to what you were doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I get it. I guess the allegations, and then now hearing like why he was a, uh, you know, banned on Twitch is concerning. But I never really followed him, so it's kind of like I know it sounds bad. I don't care. Right. But um let, let let justice, you know do its thing. Yeah. Swear. Yeah, yeah. But now it comes to the question too, like what's going on with Twitch? Like I they, are they a part of this as well? Like are they did they actually pay him out and sweep it under the rug kind of thing? Like yeah. the, you know, wouldn't that make you question Twitch as well, you know, as someone who, you know uh does watch well, Twitch in general is so shady as fuck with their, you know, <clears throat> with what they do in the background, yeah. how they treat um what what should be bannable versus not bannable, and it's like yes, it's yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. It's not like you're like, oh, I'm not gonna watch on Twitch anymore because uh this is going on and Twitch has been so shady and all that stuff, like. Um, like you're still like watching or following certain people on Twitch, yes? Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's, that's fair. I mean, uh, we, it's still, it's still like, like, it, not, a lot of this has not been confirmed, right? So yeah. it's, 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 it's definitely hard to say as to what is true, what's not true, but it is weird for sure because he didn't outright say, I didn't do it. That's not, that's false or whatever. He just says, no wrongdoing was acknowledged and they paid out the whole contract kind of thing in one sentence and that has been settled right so you know what i mean that's that's the, that's the thing it's like kind of leaving leaving um people hanging you know what i mean um but man if okay so let's say if it is true then that's truly fucked up because that's like remember because when uh 
there was the whole thing with uh, Dr. Disrespect having an affair, right? And he, I think he's still with his wife, right? Like, they hashed it out and everything and private and all that stuff, and she's still with him, I think. But if this is true, is that what was tied to it as well? Like, is that what he had, who, who he had an affair with, with, with a, a young person? Like, Jesus. That's like, whoa, you know? That is some serious shit, right? But yeah, for the fact that he came out with the, this person, Cody Connors came out with this. He he he's gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, he's gonna have to have some backup, right? He's gonna have some. He needs to have some evidence. You know what I mean? If you're gonna make a claim like that, so we'll see. We'll see what this evolves or goes anywhere or not. I mean, yeah. Hey, thought I thought I'd bring up Dr. Disrespect because he's still one of the biggest streamers. He's like that iconic name. He's very iconic him of himself, right? As a streamer, right? Um, you know. But it does make things a little shaky for, for Twitch as well. It's like, mm, you know what I mean? What's going on, man? We need answers. But anyway. All right. It's gonna move on with the last bit here for frontline news and this is indeed involving with uh this is a follow-up with Tudu to uh toru uh, Fu uh furuya voice act he was a voice previously a voice actor for yamcha um character from detective detective conan he was the original uh voice for um uh amano i was for uh for gundam no uh, i think another character too no, oh, yeah, Amuno Ray, excuse, excuse me, for Mobile Suit Gundam. Another character in Mobile Suit Gundam 00. Uh, or, or double O, or double zero. Um, yeah, uh, Ray Furia for, uh, for Detective Conan. Like I said, Yamcha, Tuxedo Mask, right? So, obviously, memorable characters and such. But because of what happened re previously, he uh, admitted to um, having to be in a relationship with a younger fan, or maybe in an affair, I guess, I believe. Um, yeah, because he said that he had been in a relationship with a fan, female fan, for four and a half years. Um, I think that fan was 30, or around there if I'm not mistaken but the fact that yeah he had an affair right uh but he also um actually hold on let me let me let me uh let me not get myself ahead of myself and also make sure I get this right um yes so okay so um He had an extra martial affair with a fam female fan, 37 years his junior, for around four and a half years uh, until September 2023. Admitted to striking her once and also pressuring her to have an abortion. Um, yes, so that's what happened here. And then now of June 2020, uh, 20, uh, June 22nd, of 2024, he has officially stepped down now for his roles in Detective Conan and One Piece. So that's what confirmed. I don't think he um, officially stepped down for like all those other roles, but for sure for One Piece and De 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 Detective Conan, he has stepped down. Yep. Uh, he must step down on the major roles that he's known for. Yes. So I imagine he's doing the same for Yamcha as well. For Dragon for the Dragon Ball side of things. Um there was an official statement that I thought I put in there. Oh yeah. I, okay. I'll throw it in here now. Yeah, so this is from Toy. Translated by Pew Peace. Uh Furia's agency has requested that he no longer voice the character Sabo, 
We have accepted this request and decided to replace the voice actor. We will proceed with selecting a new voice actor. We ask for your uh, continued support of, of for the One Piece uh, anime in the future. So that's their um, official statement right there. So. Well, this kind of hurts for us. Yes. One Piece fans. Yeah. I'm not going to say like who should take up um, Sabo's voice. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's always like somebody relatively new when it comes to these replacements. Like yeah. we, we do, we don't really like like see often. So I'm not gonna even bother with that. Like who should replace him and such. You know, I'm sure who they whoever they pick will do an adequate job as that character. You know, and it's kind of a blessing in surprise, blessing in disguise. Yeah, um, stuff with um what's going to happen with Sabo's because like right now uh, the art, the current art, uh, Sabo's not really there. So they have leeway, you know, a little bit of leeway. That. Yeah, for sure. Until that happens. Yes. But he will in the future. Let, let's put it that way. Yeah. Obviously, you know, um, but for like movie side, then that's pretty much like, yeah, you, they might have to, yeah, if there's already something in the Last. works, yeah, they have to like, yeah, that's that's what makes it a little hard is to retrofit all those voices to be the new voice actor and then such. Yeah. But yeah, uh, it's official now. He's stepping down, at least from One Piece and Detective Conan, but I imagine he's just stepping down in general, officially so. Um. Yeah. Because also he he's probably in a legal battle right now. So yes, I imagine so. So okay, so back to this though. Twenty thirty seven years his junior. That means the person he was with, um, is twenty three. Okay, that's pretty okay. That's that's quite the gap. Okay. I wonder why they worded it like that. But okay, instead of just saying, "Oh, he he was he, uh, he was an affair with a twenty-three-year-old fan or whatever," you know, it's, I, don't know I don't know. Anyway, uh, nonetheless, it was an affair, right? It doesn't it doesn't take it that way. Um, yeah. and yeah, it's very unfortunate. Um, that you know someone like him. Is involved with the situation he and he is of course the perpetrator and all that stuff and yeah so um it sucks to see because you know these voice actors right um pretty much make those characters like their own pretty much like it like when you imagine that character it's that voice you know what i mean a lot of times and whenever you play somebody, it's like, oh man, it's not the same anymore. Oh man, it's not the same. Yeah, you gotta you know, get used to it. You gotta get used to it again. Yeah, it's that nostalgia thing too. You know, it's you know, it's what you know. All of a sudden, changes, and that's yeah. It that definitely starts to get a little, a little weird, uh, to say the least. All right, let's uh. Head on over to the game's news, um, since we're all done with the frontline side of things. Yep. All right. Bing. Bing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Jesus Christ, what was that? A little more sad news. Um, to, uh, recently was the last day for Tango uh, GameWorks, officially. So, um, Takeo Kido uh, is, I believe, one of the staff members of tango took this picture right as they were pretty much leaving the studio um so pretty sad to see that this is all definitely happening um for sure however there's been uh kind of some weird stuff going on so matt Bodie, everyone yeah matt Bodie. yes that's that's that person's name Studio head, 
Great game. Uh, Xbox Studios head Matt Booty has implied that the, the, the decision to close down Tango Works or GameWorks was par partly due to a change of creative leadership at the studio. So basically, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Uh, Mikami, yes, he did uh, step down from the uh, the leadership in a way, but he became a mentor, I believe, at some point. So he wasn't even involved in a way with um, Hi-Fi um, Hi Rush and Ghostwire Tokyo. You know? And there are some other things that pointed... It, 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 these are just theories, I think. From uh, somebody, at least. And people were like, you know, oh, so... Xbox is blaming Mikami now for the closure. It's not so much, you know, Xbox themselves and whatever. Um, but people are trying to like kind of like level things out, saying that yeah, you know, Mikami switched to a mentor at some point, um, or is believed to to be a mentor at some point for games like Hi-Fi Rush, for example, um, yeah. because he wanted other people to shine, and uh, he didn't just. He didn't want the studio to rely on his name alone, which is why he did that to give other people a chance. Somebody else theorized um, that uh, it was something else or more to it than that. So Arcane, Arcane Austin, another studio that shut down as well, and Tango Gameworks did not meet these criteria. Again, these are just theories. Arcane Austin lost 70% of the staff during the development of Redfall. Studio leader Harvey Smith and Ricardo Bear, uh, Bear didn't show any leadership uh, on Redfall. Redfall's re uh, results were very poor, and its chances of future future success were ex are extremely slim. Uh, Tango GameWorks, Shinji Mikami, studio's spiritual leader, left Tango. Moreover, two of the three people Mikami thought would succeed him as leader of Tango have already left. Ghostwire Tokyo's unsatisfactory sales performance. At this point, Bethesda may have already considered closing Tango Gameworks. But unexpected small success of Hi-Fi Rush, right? That happened, of course. The release on PS5 was a chance to show that Hi-Fi Rush was a title that could be successful in the future. However, the, the launch of Hi-Fi Rush on PS5 was a flop and a closure of Tango Studio, uh, Tango GameWorks was finalized. So this was, I, it, uh, of course, again, these are theories, but it does make you question, like, was this already in the background? Was this already decided in the first place, right? It was an even with the fact that, yeah, Hi-Fi Rush was, was a success, they were already like looking into it and such, like because of like you know Ghostwire Tokyo and stuff like that, and the and the uh, yeah Mika, uh, Mikami leaving, and then the leadership was like kind of like in a mess. There's like, well, what do we do? You know, is what it sounds like. Did I actually unfollow him? What the fuck? I thought I followed him. That's weird. Hello. Fake. Let me see. Oh, that was weird. For a second, it said uh, follow and then following. And then, oh, that's weird. Hmm. I don't know, man. Maybe. Ugh. Huh. Okay, well, anyway. Um, whatchamacall. So. From what it sounds like, yeah, this was um, already in the works. Again, rather than, you know, oh, you know, high fire rush is a success. Nah, you know, the kind of thing. Which is sad, like after the awards that High Fire Rush, you know, brought in for Xbox. Right. This is just sad. Mm hmm. Yeah. 
It was. Oh. It's like pretty much saying like, "Thank you, but." Mm, yeah, but you guys, the... you guys could have done it better, or you know, not better, but you guys could have uh, tried a bit harder to you know stay afloat here in this company. Mm. I don't know. I mean, it's starting to. I don't know. It's because they were already thinking about it, right? Is yeah. what is being implied here. I I guess it's just like a, a case of like they didn't just didn't know what to do with the studio anymore. So they're just kind of like fuck it, right? Their their minds were already set on just closing it. But then you had Hi Fi Rush, which yeah, it did. It, it, it was loved by a, a lot of people, but what were, you know, again, what, what the fuck are the sales? What were the numbers, right? Like, why hasn't that been uh, disclosed? Um, like right away. Let me see. Yeah, it just says uh, reached 2 million players by uh, March 2023, which has been counted as a mix of both digital sales and downloaded game pass subscriptions. By August 2023, the game reached 3 million players between the purchase copies and game pass subscriptions. Yeah, it, it sounds, I don't know, right? Like, it sounds all right. Two million, three million, you know? Hmm. I, I think, I think it might have just been just I don't know at this point it's just it just wasn't making it enough in their eyes I guess so they just want to say fuck it we're just gonna close it down at this point um. Yeah, I don't know. It, it it does look bad on Microsoft for sure. That's one way to look at it. Uh, especially ever since they uh took a, you know they they did that purchase right with Bethesda, uh, Bethesda all those other studios and such. Especially with uh, Tango GameWorks. So you know when they close that studio down, it's um. Like when it comes to Arcane, I can kind of understand because yeah, like, um. Uh, what was it? Redfall it was like a huge L, you know. But with uh, Tango, it's so it's it's weird. But when when you look at it as a whole, right? Yeah, Tango gets a lot of love, but like, what what was the game that sold a lot? Like, what was a major game that sold a lot? Let's let's try to be real here, you know. Was it Evil Within? You know, like look look at the, yeah look at the, look at the resume. It's only these five games. One of them is a mobile game in Asia. Under or yeah, it was a mobile game for Asia. And let's see. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see sales in Japan. Um, let's just say yeah, a hundred. Let's just let's just say a hundred uh eighty thousand copies because it has four, uh digital copies and physical copies in Japan. Um, and in the United States, it's, it just says the game was a. Uh, third best-selling game of October 2024, or excuse me, 
2014, sorry. Set the record for highest uh, selling first month of sales for a survival horror intellectual property. Until the record was broken by Dying Light uh, when it was released in January 2015. Okay. Um, but then when two came out, let's see what happens here. Yeah, in Japan, 42,000, let's just say 43,000 43, copies were sold in Japan. Uh, number three on all of, uh, format sales chart. Hmm. Doesn't really say how much in, in like the States though, or just overall sales. See, this is this is this is like what I'm trying to get at too. Is like why why is it with like Hi-Fi and a lot of these like or a number of these like Tango games, the sales numbers is always like like lost. It was it's like never like mentioned by a number of people. You know, it's it's it's, it's strange to me. Like they they just scared. Scared of what? You know, <laughs> like I don't know. They just scared to just say what, you know, what the numbers is. Mm -hmm. But then you know there'll be those um, what you call those that will actually do the digging or like ah, mm -hmm. this is the number. It's like oh dear. Yeah. You would think so, but no one else is is like. Oh, but this game sold this many copies. This, you know what I mean? It's like no, no one else is bringing it up, right? For the even for the hardcore people. Financial reason first. Now, now, literally backtracking on this. Or, uh, ugh, I don't know. Hmm. I'm just reading off of the comments. Um. And I think I think at some point too, um, Microsoft and Tango were like in the talks for a sequel or something like that. So it, it's all it's all so weird. It's very weird with Tango and in this whole situation too. Um, somebody tweeted, it says patch notes official, it says, I tweeted over a month ago that the reason for the closure was that the majority of the studio, the non hi-fi part, had been floundering with no direction since the studio, former studio head left after Ghostwire. 70% of, of the studio made no progress of, on anything for almost two years. Um, and I guess Microsoft wants to see like studios that are self-efficient and seeing that Tango was like not doing that. Maybe that's like one of the major, uh, contributions, right. To why it, uh, got shut down at some, at this point. Ah, oh, man. Either way, yeah. Either way, I, I, it definitely does look, it does make Microsoft look bad for sure. You know? And I do wish for Mikami to come out and be, and to like help things, help some, make some things uh, transparent, you know, to clarify things. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I don't want to ponder on, on upon that too much at this point. Nonetheless, though, it is sad to see something like that happen. So I think I think it could be safe to say that Microsoft is not 100%, but were they a major contribution to it? Perhaps, right? 
you know, could have they should have they should have Microsoft give um, Tangle another chance, perhaps. I don't know. Um, I think at the end of the day, I think it was just, you know, um, what do you call? It? Yeah, like like that person said, like it was floundering. It just it didn't have a direction anymore. You know, it um, they didn't know what to do with it. So again, they, they just said, fuck it. You gotta drop it and focus what, on what we have here. Especially with this whole purchase, like, like God. All right, uh, let's get on to the visual entertainment and extras news. Um, uh, which one should I play? Uh, let's go with this one. Yes. I was about to go like, oh, you can't yes. think. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I love Megatron. Anyway, so quick news on My Hero Academia stuff. I guess there was some sort of like collaboration with uh, some NBA stuff. So NBA Lab and Hyperfly, which I'm not sure what that is in particular. Uh, oh, is this some sort of like a sportswear or something or fashion wear? Let me see. Oh, it's um martial arts supply. Okay, that's cool. So it's like a three-way collab, I guess. Yeah, that's that's uh, kind of uh, that's actually kind of neat. But um, they said congrats Boston on the uh, record-breaking championship. And um, check out the sneak peek of the My Hero, My Hero Academia NBA Lab and Hyperfly Phase Two coming out later this year. And we have Deku um, do, doing some dribble, man. He's, he's, he's got some, he's, he's handling that ball. And um, this is official, right? It's from, yeah, like you, you can see it's from uh, uh, Hori Koshi, that's the author's name, Shueisha, and My Hero Academia Project on the bottom there. So, yeah, this is official art. Uh, so. Who, who would have thunk it, right? Anime and NBA and yeah, martial arts stuff. What do you think? Uh, where was this when I was like <laughs> still in um, doing training? Right. Fuck, I would buy a lot of shit if it was like Dragon Ball Z. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, it. You would think Toei or not Toei? Um, yeah, no, no, no. I think it's Toei or Shueisha. Toy. Right, Toy, Shueisha, those companies, right, would um yeah. reach out to branch like those out branch out, yeah, to like those martial arts um places, uh, Under Armour, right, Under Armour, like those like gym, the gym stuff, like that. That's a that's a actually actually a, a potentially good market to tap into, yeah, you know, because people who work out love Dragon Ball Z. People who work out love um. I'm sure, like, uh, you know, Jujutsu Kaisen or something. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I my mean, hero. Fuck it. Like, where, where was um, like you were saying, like workout for those who are training in the um, MMA or boxing? Fucking Hajime no Ippo. Fucking that. Where was that? Hajime, like, yeah, Hajime, yeah, yeah. You're right. Fucking rocking, rocking the, the trunks, the sports trunks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Lost, huh? Miss opportunity, I guess. Yeah, I think in Japan is more common for sure. I, I, I want to say it's common in Japan for sure, but um, like, but the rest of the world, like, you would think they would tap into these markets, especially with um, like Under Armour too. Like, you know, uh, imagine, imagine like Under Armour stuff with anime on it. Like, people will, will buy it. Show it off in the gym. Be like, yeah, you know, I'm inspired by, I don't know, Goku or something. Or um, that one guy from Jujutsu Kaisen that's, uh, that acts weird and all that stuff. But he's, like, really strong. Um, you know, that stuff. Uh, I forget his name. He's, he's, like, really buff. And he has, like, a like a man bun. Like a samurai hand, man bun, almost. He has, like, a big scar on his face. Oh, damn. Um, anyway. Those characters. Hodo? Hodo? Is it what it is? 
Toto the one that does this? Yes. Yeah. The, the, yeah yes. Toto. <laughs> Thank you. That's what it was. I, I need I need to catch up on that, man. Anyway, a lot a lot of those people love anime, right? Um, very very much inspired by that. You know. Same same with uh, well, does Marvel do stuff like this? I don't know, right? Unofficially, I guess. Unofficially, yeah. If you, I, I guess you want to, if you want to, like do like a custom print or something. Um, but yeah, I I think more of these companies should really tap into those side of things, like the sports stuff, right? You know, yep. G- fuck it, just that's a just the gym, martial arts, you know, like karate gear, you know, or like uh, ju- uh um Brazilian Brazilian Jiu Jitsu stuff. Yep. All that all that training wear. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I- I'm surprised that Bandai Namco slash Harada's team is not going like, you know, maybe we should do like, you know, gym clothes. Yeah, or- Tekken, yeah. Street Fighter, absolutely. Right? Video game companies. They need, they, I think they should uh, try at least to tap into those markets. To give it a try. I think that'd be pretty cool. Alright. So this is a weird post. Speaking of sort of weird crossover stuff and all that all that jazz. A live action this is from IGN. Live action totally spies. Is series is coming to Prime Video with Will Ferrell executive producing. What a weird fucking headline right there. It's like I would have never thought that Will Ferrell have any affiliation with the totally spies, like whatever. What's that all about? He he's gonna be one of the spies. I yeah, want right? to say he's gonna be Sam. Oh Sam, yeah. Is 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 uh, is Pharaoh wet, uh, redhead? I don't, I don't think he is. Right. It's, uh, let me see. I, I don't think he is. Let me see if he's from where. Uh, what's his, what's his ancestry like? Um. Let me see. It didn't say. Oh, okay. There we go. English, German, Irish. Okay, never mind. Uh, oh wait. Well, Irish. Eh, okay. Perhaps. But anyway, not important. So, um. But yeah, Will Ferrell. You know, with with Totally Spies, one way or the other, it is a different or very weird combination that I would never ever think of. Although funny, there is some little connection to that because, you know, Will Ferrell did appear in The Boys, right, as a little cameo. And that's a prime uh, prime, very much a very uh, prime video thing. So there may be some, like, connecting the dots thing, like, going on. Like, okay, you know. Uh, I guess Prime, or Amazon has Will Ferrell. Might as well just use, have him uh, have, uh, use him for um totally spies as a weird way to help promote the show oh, but with pharaoh of all people man that's weird that's so weird and for him to come aboard on board with that is very strange hmm i wonder how that uh played out you know Uh, let me see. So, okay, never mind. That's not a qu- quote from Farrell, so I am not gonna read that. Um, yeah, I mean, seeing the the, the names together like that, it's like, oh man, that's very strange. Yeah. Very strange. The the thumbnail is cute, you know. It's ha ha. All right, very funny, you know, kind of thing. Will Ferrell's face on all the three <laughs> spies. Uh, not kind of nightmare fuel, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is funny. Uh, this is pertaining to the boys. Because uh, I, I mentioned, right, about Black Noir, right, of where they're going to go with him. And I said, like, oh, they're not, you're not going to do the whole, like, clone thing right for homelander's clone and uh, this is a quote from uh, eric kripke who is one of the key people for amazon's the boys saying at least according to culture crave um 
in the comics, he is a clone of Homelander this entire time and is actually do the one doing all these horrific things. It's a hell of a twist, but it's like, well, wait, the villain I've been following isn't really the villain. I'm sure the fans are mad. I'm not going that way. But I, but, but that felt not as satisfying to me. I'm like, if I'm going to follow Homelander, I want this guy to be the villain. So I will... I was re uh, really never. Uh, I was never really into the clone idea. End quote. Um, another one says, "Going to sound silly, but cloning feels too magical for the show." We try to say that superheroes are the slippery banana, and that everything else we try to make as grounded as possible. So, um, what? Do you uh, make of that one? What, what do you think? He's taking creative liberties and, you know, making it, you know, making the boys TV show its own thing. Yeah. Yes, it differs from the comic, but again, have you seen the comics? <laughs> Would you really want to see that on, you know, on TV and shit? No, not really. Some people do, but yeah, mostly no. Yeah, some people do, and it's like, do you really? Because, um, like the Game of Thrones, um, show, well, it's, um, newest, chat, um, it, um, entry into the franchise, which is House of the Dragon, which is a prequel to Game of Thrones, but the book is done, so it's being based off the book. Yeah. Pretty much the first episode right now has a, very big ass like moment in in the book and the book doesn't shy away of what happens mm -hmm. and it's like people are going like oh they should follow the book it's like you know they can't really do that they cannot play the scene for obvious reason one there's a child involved mm, okay two there is blood involved from said child yeah there are codes and like restrictions and other guidelines of children, you know, on set or, you know, well, filming children. You cannot do whatever the book is saying, like, oh, this is, this is the thing happened to the child. Yeah. He, he ha ha. It's like, no. For all you people saying that they should follow the book, like, really, do you really want to see that scene? Yeah, I'm gonna type it out to you so you so you know so you kind of get the context, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, like, there are also um, I mean, there's some anime that followed followed the uh, or I should say I sh a number of anime followed the story or manga like one to one, um, and that being uh, is Goblin Slayer. A manga or based off a of manga? Do you know? Yeah, Goblin Slayer is based off of the manga. Then you have the light novels, and then the anime. yeah, light. I think I think it is more of a light novel. But anyway, so a light novel, of course, included a very uncomfortable scene. They put yeah. that uncomfortable in scene, detail. Yeah, in, in detail. In detail. Well. Yes, they put that same scene, pretty much showing the basic detail of that scene. And guess what? People got mad. People were People got up in arms. Yes. That, oh, this is the most like not darkest, but this is the most um cash grab or like like you don't see this type of um stuff in anime, and then that's when other old anime watches come out. I was like, you really did not watch old Berserk, have you? Right. Right. Old then, Berserk is fucking worse. Now, to be fair, Goblin Slayer was wrongly rated on Crunchyroll because it was put into Y7 or TBY7 for some reason instead of, well, MA. That's why, yep. yes, it, it was, uh, that happened, right? It blew up that big. But the fact that, yes, they put these scenes and it doesn't always, you know, stick it with everyone that's why a lot of studios are kind of like hmm you know they, they try to make they try to be creative about it um 
Hold on, let me just read. Okay. Okay. All right. I got it. I got the DM. All right. And then, uh, even in sort of online, they were implying, um, very inappropriate things. Let's just say that happened in the, uh, the light novel, right? Yep. Pretty uncomfortable. Didn't fully happen, uh, in both sources. Right. But they were heading to that thing. And of course they got rescued. Right. Um, they, they, were, it, you know, that, that situation, I think was stopped. I want to say, but either way for that, for that to happen, you know, it was a mix, right? People had mixed feelings like, oh, you know, you're, uh, it, this is inappropriate or whatever, blah, blah. And then, and then of course people were like, oh, that's what happened in the book or that's what happened to the light novel, you know, that sort of thing. So it's like, um, that does make things a little more difficult whether to, to include them or not. But I would say like, as long as you're creative about it, then I, 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 I uh, won't care too much. If you want to do it one to one. Okay. Well, that's your choice. Um, yeah. and it depends on the story is, you know, was this fit for the story? You know, are you, was this done purely out of shock factor, you know? just to have a controversy for the sake of uh, uh, having a controversy to stay relevant on pe people's radar and stuff like that. You know, um, I, uh, you know, I, I hate to say it like this, but it just depends. It depends on the show. Do I like the show? Do I don't like the show? You know, it all depends with this one, right? We're talking, we're not talking about like, you know, inappropriate, you know, acts or anything like that. This is just, you know, oh, this, it's a clone, you know, it was a clone this entire time kind of thing. And, um, I can definitely see where this person is coming from with, with Kri Kripke. It does, it would take away the impact that the Homelander we know had on the show. If, if they actually went with this direction, it's like, oh, yeah. the clone did it, you know? So all that time. Or, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah. It's like, yeah. Um, so it's like, yeah, uh, I, I definitely do, do see that reasoning and I think that's fair, right? It, it would come off as, as like, yeah, you know, Homelander or John, you know, I, I should, we should say, um, he will come off less of a villain. It's like, now it's like, what well, you know, what do we think of him? Right. As like a sympathetic figure now, like, or. You know, we can't think of this guy as an unhinged villain anymore. He's now it's like a different direction. Whereas, oh, now we have to think of this guy that we haven't really seen technically. We've only seen it. We've only seen him off screen or whatever as this big final villain or whatever. Say, like, oh, I did it. Ha ha. You know, I'm the, I'm your clone or whatever. What and such. But then if we went down that route. There was no, there's no build up to it. Like exactly, he was a clone. There was no like indication like Black Noir was, you know, was able to fly or mm -hmm. have um, heat vision or super strength. Exactly. I mean, he has enhanced strength, mm -hmm. but not super strength. Right, right, right. So yeah, the payoff would just be eh. right. Uh, I think you were you're on the track of like yeah like it was just, it's just it would be just so sudden there's no build up to it like it's just kind of like oh oh okay you know um it's a, yeah you know as someone says it's it's a, it's a cliche it would have been very cliche for them to do that um. I like that they're not following the they're not exact uh, they're not following it exactly as it went in the uh, comics, you know. Um, another perfect example of how the show uh, is levels upon levels uh, than the comic series. I, I I kind of agree with that. This is the perfect example of how to honor source material, but also know when to deviate to create your own story. Right. 
Yeah. I think all in all, I think the clone thing would have taken away from the Homelander we know is what we're trying to get at. We love Homelander as that unhinged villain. Right? And so if that were to happen, right, if this if this idea were to come to fruition, then yeah, it would definitely take away a lot of that. You know? Oh, so it wasn't Homelander who raped Becca, you know? Uh it wasn't Homelander who did all these things. It was the clone, right? So is it see it wasn't Homelander that pushed his, pushed his son off the roof. Yes, yeah. <laughs> That'd be kind of weird, but yeah, no, that, that, but yeah, I think the point point is uh, given at this point. So um, it, it, it would just be for shock value, but yeah. for like the wrong reason. Yeah, I th yeah, I think so too. It would definitely come off as kind of cheap. So, so yeah, I'm, I am glad that they are um, taking liberties to make the story um, different. Right, very different, and I say I, I personally would say better than the comics because I don't know. To me, the comics just comes off as like very revenge porn, thing kind of thing. Revenge porn plus like mom. just like shock factor of the comics. Yeah. John, and then there's that um, scene that you know these people are saying that oh they should have followed the comics. Is they you realize Homelander had gay sex, right? Will you guys be fucking on board if you saw that on on screen? Yeah, and probably so, not. Yeah, and <laughs> he yeah he and he did it with Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy is yeah, a Soldier very Boy. different character in in that in the comics. In the show, yeah, yeah, or or in the show, yeah. Show is a very different in character. The, in, yeah, in both mediums, he's very different. Yes, yes. So, um, so it's like again, like to those. Yeah, saying that they they want comic book accurate. It's like no, you don't. You really don't. Yeah. If you want one for one of what the comic is, you just read the comic. Don't don't watch the show then, because it's not gonna be how you envisioned. You know. Yeah. 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 That's why again, when it comes to the mcu i do have prior knowledge of these characters yes it's hard to you know kind of like go like mm, they're making captain marvel not the same you know it, it does creep up behind me but then it's like you know it's a it's multi it's a multiverse different universe blah 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 okay it's like mm, gotta go, like whack my head it's see like, my Different universe. Yeah. Got it. See, my issue with that, though, then with MCU is that it's now that they're changing it in ways that I don't like it or I, I, I just don't find it entertaining. Like, you know, um, if the movie if the movie of itself is like, eh, you know, then it's like at that point, you know. it. I guess it wouldn't matter that Mar get this Captain Marvel is different from the Captain Marvel from the books. What I watched in this movie, I didn't like it. So it's like, you know, I didn't like it, right? And maybe yeah, maybe it did. It did have to do with the fact that they changed this character for the worst from the comics to the movie or something. But you know, maybe sometimes that's the, that, gamble, that, right. that's the gamble. Right, when that's the gamble like that. exactly. Exactly. If you're going to change something, you gotta do. You gotta be good about it, right? Um, sort of like with what happened with Ryan Johnson in Star Wars, right? He just went too too far on on that part of the bar, or too far on that side, and um, did it and made it for the worst. You know, he wanted to make his own movie. Okay, okay. I mean, that's you're right, I guess. But look how it turned out. You right? should not. Yeah, he's like. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when he outright said, "Oh, I'm not doing this for the fans. I'm just doing this for the money," is like that should have been Disney's fucking red flag. Going like, mm -hmm. stop. Yeah, but don't they just? I guess they it was they already were in too deep. So yeah, but can they? They had to really bite the bullet, and there it is. Right. 
And then, yes, people can blame J.J. Abrams for fucking recycling um, recycling the, the old new hope. Yeah, yeah, the old but stuff. That, but yeah. that was the thing. A New Hope came out like fucking 40 plus years like that. Yeah, in the 70s, right? So. He's, yeah, he's trying to bring new people. He's, he is catering to the old, but he wants new people to slowly come into into star wars that's why he kind of rehashed it mm -hmm. and then yeah you'll have the argument well there was other media just and this and that it's like do you realize some of these kids who went to see these um the new trilogy don't have that big attention span that we had some of these kids ain't gonna read a fucking 400 page book they're gonna probably stop at page 10. You might you might be lucky for them to watch the entire um series of the Clone Wars. Might get lucky. Then you have the comic books. Maybe you'll be lucky there, but it's like those comic book stories within the Star Wars universe, very tricky because they're gonna ask you, is this canon or is this legends? Yeah. Does yeah. this follow this storyline, or is this like a what if scenario? So it's like, then there's the video games. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's fucking the video games. Like, is this canon, or is this a what if? Yeah, you get the whole old republic stuff, and then the new republic, and then yeah, yeah you have the old republic. Um, you had the fucking um Star Killer games. Um, yeah, the Force Unleash, which. Yeah. Is supposed to be canon, but it's now tricky to say which part of those games are fucking canon. And then now you have, and then someone tried to say that um the Star Wars Connect game is fucking canon. Oh god! Oh man! And I'm like, how? Like in my eyes, if you're gonna make the Star Wars Connect game, the only thing that's canon in that fucking game is Han Solo dancing. Yeah, that's the only shit that's canon. <laughs> Everything else is like legends. <laughs> yeah. Don't speak of it. <laughs> yep. But yeah, so. Oh, yeah, what we're trying to say is that sometimes it's not good to go one, one to one, shot for shot, yeah. one to one on the source material. Mix it up. Yeah. A bit. Some, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. And then, you know, I, I had to even further like tangent but like but also hits it home a little bit is the cowboy bebop stuff remember that the costumes the outfits you know what i mean character the designs <laughs> the dial oh my god yes but the cut let's just say the costume designs right like sometimes you can't do that so you have to yeah. be creative about it you know what i mean creative about it but respect of what the character embodies yes yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. jumping on you bring up call with me back phase original you know phase outfit is not bad already no no that's red light district <laughs> ready mm -hmm. you cannot tell me that that woman is going to run you know run away from co and find cover fire and all that jazz and her 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 twigs of a shirt is going to be like holding like yes I will <laughs> hold us <laughs> and do it, it for mother <laughs> and it's gonna be like um Spider Man and Spider Man two like and he's like yeah. trying to stop the train <laughs> <laughs> that whole thing so I I'm glad mm -hmm. they took the liberty to change the outfit but it it harkens back to like oh. There's some here and there, like, oh, you know, familiar um, articles of clothing, like, oh, okay. Because, mm -hmm. again, Fei Fei's outfit in the anime is like, wow, you sexy. Yeah. I don't see you able to run in that. That thing looks like if you make, like, a like a fast, like, pivot, snap. And it's like, ah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure dodge rolling in that outfit would hurt too 
because the scraping and dodge rolling and and also like just sliding you know yeah. where you have no protection on her yeah i did on her legs or stuff she'll be like Shh, oh yep Red and, Baron. It, and then same with um and and then, and then let me bring up one piece netflix right luffy's uh, slippers or sandals or whatever are shoes because you know it's dangerous to do stunts and all that stuff and slippers yeah, the, and sandals the, the wool the wool no um the straw the straw slippers yeah also are in uncomfortable they ain't comfortable to fucking wear yeah so you gotta give it to the actors if they were gonna go full on shot for shot they will have blisters yeah like on the third hour yeah, I mean they'll build they'll build up calluses, but uh, who knows? Hey, yeah, uh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's gonna be like, ooh. yeah, who knows, man? What could happen to their feet when they uh, are trying to do stunts with those sandals or slippers or whatever? Right. That's why, like, when people try to like when my friends were cosplaying as Jiraiya from Naruto. Yeah. They went full out, and so they also had the um the wooden shoes. Oh, the sandals, yeah. What they're called. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They told then they it was only an hour in to their mm-hmm. stuff. They were already walking like you know like oh, lovely they're... ladies after yeah. after a bar they had yeah. the stuff like over <laughs> yeah. there and just walking like that. And I was like, holy shit, are you okay? And they're like, nope. Oh, shit dude. fucking hurts. Yeah, because the strain between your toes, uh, your toes. Oh, dude, I can imagine that being yeah, a nightmare. And also, it's it's just wood. It's just flat. Yeah, it's flat. Oh. So so it also is bad if your foot is is um arched. Not flat feet, but yeah. but it has an arch. Yeah. Oh. oh yeah. And they were like dedicated. They didn't have no paddings and stuff. No, they they fucking just. They manpowered through that. And I'm like, you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, like looking at them. Like, you should have done what other cosplayers do. Have the comfort, uncomfortable shoes to walk around. For photo ops, then you, you put, put it on. Yeah, them. and you put it on. Yeah, and they're like, no, no, I have to be dry. I was like, you don't know. <laughs> yep, you're a fucking idiot. But I, I can't say shit. Because when I cosplay as the linger, um, do Flam- uh, do flamingo, yeah, six six inch stilettos. I was the idiot wearing that for fucking almost twelve hours. Yeah. Oh. And Man. my friend, who loves her platforms and her um high heels, looked at me going like, "Damn, so I know you gay, but shit, you are more of a girl than I am." I like, yes. <laughs> I have the blisters and the fucking sore foot to prove it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That my JJ is bigger than yours. And then that's when <laughs> I fucking tripped and fell. Oh and then my, my friend was like, there you are. That's the girl. You fell. And I was like, fuck you. Yeah. But yeah, never again I'm going to cosplay something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you did. The, the linger was just that one year, and then never again. Because looking at stilettos is like, yeah, you do you, girl. I'm gonna wear my Nikes. I'm gonna wear my Pumas. Yeah, <laughs> I wanna live. You did. You did it. You experienced it. You now you know. Now you know. Now you know what it's like. I walk. I walked in her shoes. Yep. Hey. Pretty much. Pretty much. All right. So. Last That's it one? for that last one. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. A little more on the boys. Um, Hideo, Hideo Kojima, right? Who loves to give like these reviews on on Twitter and stuff like that. Um, oh man, especially that lovely review for Madam Web. Oh, because all, all he said was, <laughs> "I watched Madam Web." That's it. That was that was the review. That's it. But no, for um, episode four of the boys. Oh yeah, I mean. He definitely had something to say, right? Like story reached a climax once three and four. Uh, the characters are further explored, more foreshadowing as a fresh start made towards this conclusion. Blah blah. blah. Um, the irony of a bloody hero in in a in a sense is a metaphor for America, um, and, and modern society today is what sets it apart from just another hero movie. And then the boys, of course, the boys Twitter, loved it. Yep. Right. 
that uh, Hideo Kojima loved it. So it's it's good to see, right? You know, people like Kojima liking mm-hmm. this so uh, the uh, the show, you know, get giving pretty passionate reviews for stuff like he for stuff he likes. Yeah, for stuff that he enjoys. Not... Because, yeah. But if it's something that he he just goes meh, he just makes a one sentence. Yeah, he's just like, yep, I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? What, what was it? Hold on, let me let me let me go try and find it. I uh, bet you Kojima would like. Not saying that he he does, but if he did, but he was watching like you know one of those like. The talk of the town on hentai, and he would just be like, "Yeah, right, it was okay." It's all right. <laughs> then everyone's just gonna howl on him. It's like, "What do you mean it's okay?" Yeah. <laughs> he's like, "He's like, yeah, I watched it." <laughs> uh, it didn't make my chin chin go go hard though. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, look at that! Look, look at look at how long he reviewed um, the Godzilla Kong movie, right? And let let me tell you, kids, that that long review for Godzilla, that's his opening thesis statement. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's even funnier. Um, damn, I'm hearing fireworks already. Goddamn, it's not July, man. Calm down. Um, what? oh, there it is. I saw saw Man of Web at the theater. <laughs> that one sentence is. Pr- is like equivalent to fucking SpongeBob making the the. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, oh, uh, that's so funny. Oh, but he did the same. Yeah, that that's unfortunate. He also said the same. Did the same for Mar- um Captain well, that's, Marvel. That's the first Captain. Yeah, that's the first one. It though, was yeah. pretty, It was pretty much the the. Yeah. But the second Captain Marvel, to me personally, they. They fixed her as much as they could. Yeah. Because Brie Larson li- did listen to the fans' uh, critiques, saying, like, Captain Marvel was so bland in the first movie, and then the second one, they made her kind of, like, not enjoyable, but, you know, like, to- like tolerable. Wow. Yeah. yeah, like, tolerable or, like, wow, she has emotions, because that was the one thing, and I agree. The first Captain Marvel was, like, Wow, you he's like girl you have no fucking emotions you are you're like a piece of plywood even mm-hmm. plank from ed and eddie has more freaking ra- emotional range than you <laughs> Damn. like go go rewatch like captain marvel and all you see is just mm-hmm. yeah no, i remember i remember in I second do. one she actually like shows like Anger, laughter, hate, regret. I'm like, where was all of this in the first movie? Yeah, and I think throughout the the Avengers parts, I think she did start to like get better with her. And then yeah, by the time the second the second Marvel Captain Marvel movie came out, not that I watched it, but from what from what you're making it sound me, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, the way that she should have been written with emotion stuff is how she acted with Tom Hiddleston and Samuel L. Jackson in. Kong style, um, Skull Island. Mm-hmm. Like, if they kept that type of, like, curious, but, you know, strong female, like, architect, archetype it's, to yeah. Captain Marvel, then it will be like, wow, you are. Because in the comics, Captain Marvel, or Miss Marvel, depending on which era. Yeah. She is arrogant. Like, that was the one thing that was also missing. She was not arrogant. She isn't. She's kind of like a know-it-all, and then, and then she gets humbled. Uh huh. Yeah. And then she goes into a coma oh. because of Rogue. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. Did yes. she? Uh, what did she call? Did did the uh, Rogue like grab her or something? Is that what it was? Yeah. So okay. Rogue held on too tight. Uh huh. And that so Rogue absorbed all of Captain Marvel's powers. Oh. And that's why Carol Danvers is in a coma, but then that's another storyline that she's out of a coma and now she's back in action. To which it's it's a lot of shit. <laughs> a yeah. lot of com- comic book history. It's like you cannot just go like go here, 
and here. And mm-hmm. you end up here. Notice that you go here, 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 here. Circle back here. Then you go there. Then you go here. And maybe you can end up right here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, the, the boys has been uh, uh, um, ramping it up. And it's yeah, so forth. Watch it's it. good. It's good. It's still good. It's still good overall. There's some obvious like little little cons here and there. But it's still good. Homelander is still Homelander. And the main storyline is still good. So, yeah. Uh, last one up real quick. Netflix, strangely, is launching their own popcorn uh, for almost $5. <laughs> Netflix, now popping. I read buy... Mm-hmm. I read buy... Um, I love um, uh, Orville mm-hmm. popcorn. Yeah. But there's that other popcorn company that makes the kettle corn pop them. I go. Um, but this is just sad. It's basically um, I, I'm 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 gonna take a wild guess. Basically, if you've had popcorn Indiana, then. You've had this popcorn, basically. It, I think they're just slapping their name on this uh, popcorn brand. Is I think it's what it is. Oh uh, yeah, it was Orville, Orville again. But uh-huh. <clears throat> when I was small, it was either you, we jumped to Orville or Pop Secret. It was just a flip flop. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's called Netflix now. Popping is their popcorn brand or lineup. And it says it's available in Walmart stores across the U.S. as well as other retailers. Um, to help get your hands on the bag, Popcorn Indiana has a locator search uh, to show you nearby stores. Blah blah blah. Um, okay, yeah, they, they they they've done other collaborations like with uh, Ben and Jerry with uh, Netflix uh, Netflix and chilled ice cream. Yeah, that, that's right. I do remember that. Uh, sadly, I don't think I've tried it in the past, but whatever. Not a biggie. Um, but now they have their own, or they have their name on the popcorn now, so. Hmm. Um, I'm more interested with popcorn Indiana than anything. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm surprised that when you, uh, with the Netflix popcorn on the bag, like fucking bold ass on the bag saying like, you know, please subscribe to Netflix to watch, you know. Yeah. That would be pretty cool to have like, um, I don't know, like one piece on there or something or like, uh, uh, what was another Netflix? Show? Oh, no, no. Stranger Things, right? Like I'm surprised they don't put like Stranger Things stuff on there, you know, it's such a big Netflix show. Um, oops. Ooh, what was it? Where's my? Oh, there you go. Um, someone made a pretty little, little wise, uh, you know, wise ass sort of comment. Does it cost extra to share it with family or no? Nah? <laughs> oh man, that's... You know, that that's a good question. That's a good question. Right? Can't. Hey, he's not wrong for asking that, right? Oh, apparently it's like just four bucks on Walmart. Where you go? Three dollars too much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of things are costing a lot. Oh, even uh, is that even? Oh no, that's a, that's a satire. Elon Musk. Never mind. I was about to say like, uh, did he? Did he actually? Yeah. Price gonna go up after three months. Oh my god. Yep, yep. I was waiting for that. Like, where, where's the price gouge? Yeah. You can buy five bags of organic microwave popcorn so it's hot and fresh each time for less than this. Um. Yeah. Thought I uh thought I in there. It's, it is Netflix after all. Uh, 
Uh, it's not on the docket, but I did want to mention this. So, Gamera from Netflix has a bit of some technicalities. So, it is more possible to see Gamera, that Gamera, and Godzilla um, clash it out because of how the licensing works for this situation anyway. If that makes sense. So I think with the films in the past, they have a different license too. So that's why it's that makes it more difficult all the more. But with this one, it's like Netflix, you know, and Kata, Katakawa, of course, Katakawa and Netflix. So, hey, I mean, we, we could definitely uh, see um, Godzilla versus or Godzilla's singular point versus um, Gamma Rebirth, right? clash it out possibly because that's a that's a netflix godzilla anime and they can clash it out you know so there that could be possible all right uh did you have you uh did you ever watch godzilla singer point yes oh okay did you did you like it at all or you thought it was okay or it was okay i just didn't like some of the um monster and character designs it it, it was I know it's bad to say it was jarring for it. Yeah. Come on, can you... The biggest one I fucking wanted to just like do the whole like, hey, I'm out. Was what was on fucking Jet Jaguar. Yeah. Holy shit. I was like, what the fuck is this? Right. Like, I like what they're trying to go for for this Godzilla, but they're kind of like repeating a lot of what Shin Godzilla did. So it came off as like a little unoriginal. Other than that, the the anime character, the actual anime characters were were all right. Um, other than that, yeah, like I I would have loved to see more on like the the yokai stuff, yokai aspects, and somehow incorporate that with Godzilla, this Godzilla, to make it a little different. But overall, like yeah, he just comes off. Very much like Shin Godzilla. Shin Godzilla, and then yeah, I'm fucking the pterodactyl thing. I didn't know that was fucking Rodan. Oh yeah, that was supposed to be Rodan. I turn, I turn on the fucking um, closed captions, and it was like, like in parentheses, Rodan. Like I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. like, that's not fucking Rodan. That's the Pink Power Rangers fucking Megazord. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I, I instantly recognize um the creature that was supposed to be um Angiris or Yeah, 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 yeah. Fucking pronunciation you want to go with, but Angiris, like, that's yeah. Not fucking Rodan. Right, like, but fuck? <laughs> Rodan was made into a literal pterodactyl, so he's like okay. pterodactyl. Yeah. I mean we can't I mean now looking at the monster verse for Rodan, it's like yeah, he was kinda a pterodactyl, but he had his own yeah, like distinction. Yeah, and, and it was a callback to the Heisei period. So he Heisei, had like yeah, a mixture, mm -hmm. a mixture of familiar like features to go like that's real bad. Yeah, it's a more respectful uh, design over um, singular point. That uh, yeah, <laughs> over that that yeah yeah yeah, and then. Yeah, and then I, you know, since we're bringing out the monster, the monster verse, I would have been very pissed off if somehow they, you know, they brought in King Ghidorah, but they fucking made him not look like King Ghidorah. I'd be like, the fuck is that? Right. I was like, oh, that's King Ghidorah. What if they just made, yeah, like, what if this made King Ghidorah into, like, like Cerberus or something? Like, like more, more, like, dog-like <laughs> or something? Yeah, I, that. I mean, I think it was in the Showa era. Like, King Ghidorah had the, uh, the main. Uh-huh. But that quickly went away, like. Oh, yeah. Super quick. It was like, yeah. and that's stupid. <laughs> it's like, and we're gone. Yeah. We we got the razor and we, we shaved him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we shaved them. <laughs> oh, man. Not even man. It's just they, they fucking got Gaigan and go like, Gaigan, can you can you like take a little off the top? Yeah. Okay, a little bit more. 
I want to I want to see guy again, man. I want to see a modern uh modernized guy again somewhere. Well, uh, if you're going to have guy again, you got to have his boyfriend um Megalon. Oh, Megalon, yeah. Yeah. I like to see Megalon as well. Which that's what I thought that um Godzilla um Kong New Empire it was going to show either Gigan or Megalon cuz they're like hollow earth something's there. I was like Megalon Ah, oh. the giant ass cockroach. <laughs> yeah, or beetle, beetle. Yeah, it's like cockroach, beetle, kind of weird dead thing. Drills. Yeah, dead drills. Yeah, and then uh, guy again is just like a cyber space chicken, <laughs> space rooster. Space chicken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then someone said like, someone said like, oh, Godzilla, Godzilla cross Kong, New Empire. They should have had Hedera. I was like. Why? Yeah, that's weird. Maybe like, the next one? It, I don't know. Yeah. It was like, you realize Hedera's gimmick was pollution. Yeah, like the um, the radioactiveness, it could be pollution, but then they stated in the movies countless times after the radiation is like normalized, um, lot you know plant growth goes up like a thousand percent so it's like yeah you so you don't really need hedera unless uh they can bring him from space or something like or retrofit it to have him come from space because originally to be fair in the original movie he did come from space and then someone's like when are we gonna see godzilla fight ebby i was like oh ebby ebby <laughs> It's like the, the giant <laughs> lobster. I mean, we already had a giant crab, so I mean, it's not far off. Probably. Well, to just... me, I was like, I was like, Eddie, you, you, you have a greater chance of seeing Godzilla fight fucking up, uh, the the prey mantis. Oh, Kamakura or whatever you call it. Yeah, Kamakiri. Kama, is that Kamakura or Kamakiri Kira yeah. or something? Yeah, Kamakiri. Yeah, yeah. So. you'll have a better chance of seeing that. Yeah. And then there's the spider one in the Kumonga. <laughs> yeah, Kumonga. To which I would love to have seen it in Godzilla, where um, Kong, you know, Godzilla grabs Kumonga while it was doing the, um, the webbing and he mm. just freaking swings it, like, him, yeah. <laughs> in Final Wars. I'll be like, Somebody was watching Final Wars while making this movie. <laughs> yes. Yes. Which I, I'm still waiting, Monsterverse. Bring my favorite kaiju. Besides Daddy Godzilla. Where's King Caesar? Give me give me my King Caesar. Give me my stupid ass dog. Wait, besides wait, you said besides who? Uh besides Daddy Godzilla. Oh, oh besides okay. I need I need I need King Caesar. Uh, Caesar. Mm hmm. I need I need the protector of Okinawa that didn't even do any protecting during his mo during that movie. <laughs> <laughs> He's the great protector of Okinawa. Gets his ass whooped. Ah. Want to want to try that again? Yeah. <laughs> hey man. Want to read that legend again? Mega Godzilla was just that powerful. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man! <laughs> don't, don't, don't put down the King Caesar like that, man! Come on. <laughs> um. You know, what, what was it? Okay, King Caesar is gonna be active and walking around. Nope, goes back in this fucking hole, and the whole yeah thing falls over. It's like, mm. <laughs> it's, like it's kind of yeah, it's kind of like Patrick going to his rock. <laughs> He's like, my my work is done. Bye. Yep. It's like, but why? Yep. <laughs> uh, Alrighty. I think we've uh, had enough for tonight. Um, We've got... Uh, I think Bison's coming next week. Right? Or coming pretty soon. And Bison. Um, Yeah, because we're already at the end of... Uh, yeah. The last, we're going to be heading to the last week of June, so... Evo's pretty much right around the corner, man. Thank goodness. I'm, I'm sure you're, you know, getting a little excited, at least. 
<laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I am looking forward to it, but I'm not looking forward to the Vegas heat. Yeah. How much I'm was taking that hit for you, sir? <laughs> How much is the uh or did you did you pay for a hotel or are you staying with uh somebody? Uh so I'm gonna go with the view, the uh -huh. beautiful otaku. Originally we were supposed to go to um Flamingo, but he's found a better deal at Excalibur. I see. Okay. And what's funny with Excalibur, it's like a five minute drive to the airport or from and to the airport, but it's like a twelve minute drive from Excalibur to to the convention center. Yes. So we'll probably be Ubering it. Yeah. I got to put money on the side for gambling. <laughs> money on the side for food. Cause I hundred percent bet you that once JJ sees me, she's going to fucking kidnap me and we're going to go just eat food. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then someone in fucking Max's chat was like, are you, you're going to evil, right? So I was like, yeah, why? Are you gonna sleep with Kenny? I was like, the fuck? I don't know. What the fuck? <laughs> I was like, Am I gonna share a room with Kenny? No. And even if he invites me, no, because you know I respect the man. <laughs> yeah. I'll hang out with Kenny. Yeah. And but uh, let's just say, yeah, I get drunk. Maybe I'm gonna have to crash at Kenny's, Kenny's room. Yeah. How much, uh, do you, do you know how much with, uh, the room was? No. Okay. No. All right. We're going to discuss that when we land. Okay. That's fair. All right. No, I mean, I'm just trying to see if like, I don't know. I mean, maybe next year I might consider it, but we'll see. I don't know. Maybe next year. I don't know. Still up in the air. No guarantees. Um, I mean, like. Like the room that was supposed to be flamingo was supposed to be like seven hundred, but you know, like seven something. Okay. So split split that with two people, you know, it's doable. But if you know you come along, well, yeah, that'd be way yeah, that'd be um, way more doable for sure. Doable, or if we try to do it Airbnb, which I don't yeah. know how much that costs. Like how much does that cost? I'm for? I'm scared to see how much that costs nowadays. Yeah. yeah. At, at that time, how much was it? Like doable? Oh yeah, no, it was like it was like, I think it was six hundred. So yeah, all together with like everything. Like yeah, like we had Wi-Fi. We had like, uh, we had a kitchen to ourselves. We had like bathrooms and the there's a cleaning fee and all that stuff. The service fees. Yeah. yeah. No, it it was it was good for all things considered. But yeah, and then because my cousin was saying, "Oh, you should go since you're going to Vegas. You should go, um, you know, Caesar's Palace." I was like, ah. "Yeah, fuck you." Yeah. No, oh, thank you. But yeah, I might make this like a what you know, a yearly thing to go to Evo. It's just you know, I need. People to come with me. I don't want to go alone. Yeah, that's the thing. I need it. I um. I you definitely need company. Want, yeah, I need. I need company. I don't want to go by myself for sure. Yeah, I am. I that, yeah. And I already warned views like when we get back to the hotel, we're probably gonna freshen up, eat something small, and then my ass is on the casino floor. If I'm not back in this fucking room by like in two hours, hunt me down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, because I might be doing this. What? <laughs> the, the the fucking slot machine, <laughs> the cards. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> fuck. I should have stayed. Like, oh, oh fuck. <laughs> I know, like, oh, that's enough. No, one more, one more. Oh, it's the winning one. <laughs> this is the winning one. This is the winning one. <laughs> uh, then I win like a little bit. I won. Yep. Okay, that's 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 good. Now let's go back to the stuff. No, wait, I'm starting now to win. To go to... Yeah, I'm starting but to it was win. Like, I'm on a winning streak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And you'd be like, no, because you're just going to use your winning streak for F goal. And I'd be like, the oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you'd be like, you're right, man. Yeah. <laughs> I should do that. <laughs> that's, when, that's when I'll give you permission to just knock me out. You'd be like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> the security, excuse me, sir. He gave me permission. <laughs> I have consent. <laughs> I have consent and you've somehow recorded me. <laughs> you may knock me out. Video evidence. Can you yeah, imagine me dragging you across the the casino floors by your ankle and shit? <laughs> <laughs> you just see a hotel staff. Do you need help? Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh yeah. And yeah, I mean Evil's gonna be kind of weird because i haven't been there since like 19 uh -huh. 2019 mm -hmm. yeah yes oh it's gonna be weird for me too <laughs> shit yeah so for if sure. you come along next year or whatnot yeah next year or the year after i don't know we'll yeah, see yeah. yeah sometime sometime it's just that i don't like it in july it's such a fucking it is a nightmare with the heat but yeah. you know but we will be indoors. We are indoors most of the time, yes. And when we walk just... outside, it is mostly at night. So it's not like, yeah. Well, that's that's the thing. I might not stay at the convention like the whole day. I'll probably be like, no. Yeah. Here, there. Well, yeah, okay, I'm hungry. I want to yeah. go out eat. You guys can tag along. Yeah, that's how it. That's how. how yeah, that's how it's pretty much how we went about it. It's like, all right, we're not, we're right, we're we're here for like what, at most three hours, and then hit yeah, three hours, and then you dip, dip, go back, plan like, oh, where should we go eat, and then go go to the strip, find something to eat. Oh, cool, Kenny's doing the one dollar beer thing. All right, let's can, uh do the crawl a little bit, and then oh, they go to a club. We're gonna go that way. <laughs> in the club, in the club, in the club. Yeah. Yeah, then you see me getting dragged by JJ, <laughs> quoting a sign. Help me! I, I wouldn't mind like, seeing uh, JJ and hang out with her. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind, but then I'll be like, my wallet's bleeding because all these food places. Yeah. Now, Zawa, let's go to this. Hey, you're still hungry, right? It's like, girl, we just ate like 45 minutes. Are you gonna ago. try? Are you gonna try to do the 24 hour buffet thing or or um? There is a buffet that I wanna go. I forgot which hotel it is. You pay 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. It's like a two three hour buffet. Uh huh. But it's pretty much like around the world. So you'll have your Greek food, your Asian food, you know, Mediterranean. You you. It's pretty much yeah around eat around the world. Oh, okay, that sounds cool. That's amazing, that sounds cool. I was like that sounds amazing. I want to try that. But yeah, for for fifty, 50 bucks, well. damn, that sounds yeah, fifty bucks. And then well, that's like lunchtime and then mm. dinner time because they will have the lobster oh, and the crab legs. Then then it's like seventy bucks, but you know yeah. that's because it has the lobster. They have more. They have like more stuff. Yeah, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> Uh, if not, maybe if I see JJ and if we could get tickets, I'll be like, hey, JJ, want to go watch Thunder, Thunder Down Under? <laughs> <laughs> or the Chippendales. You know, like, <laughs> the Chippendales. Or Chippendales. <laughs> no, she's the one that drives me to Chippendales. <laughs> like, she goes, like, she'd be like, we're going to go to an ice cream place. Okay. This is not the ice cream I ordered, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> Like it's like those like um sexual ones. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but then I'll be like, I'll be like, wait, 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 wait! I have a ring, I have a ring. <laughs> oh God, JJ, why? <laughs> More. Why? More. <laughs> yeah. Then I'm gonna have to call my boyfriend. Going like, I think I made a boo boo. <laughs> I asked one of the dancers their number. We're meeting in 35 minutes. Call you back. <laughs> uh, All right. Yeah. All right. 
I mean, that's, we'll uh, see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. This year. We'll see. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But for for you, yeah. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll see how you what your what your plans uh, for, are, how it's gonna go. But yeah. But for like again, if you want to join, I think yeah. the hotel that would best accommodate us if we we're gonna go hotel would be Flamingo, Excalibur, maybe Treasure Island. Hmm. Hell no to fucking MGM. That's too fucking expensive. Yeah. Mandalay Bay also fucking expensive. Unless we can get those um deals, but you know you gotta watch those deals like a fucking hawk. <laughs> I think I got a pretty Hell decent no. one at the luxury, but I hated the luxury though. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's the thing too. I don't want to go into Luxor because that fucking place is haunted. Oh, Depending dude, that that, that, the, gets, that shit pyramid, yeah. that shit got me disoriented, man. Because like the way like the the you know how the building it's a fucking pyramid, yeah, right? The building's like a fucking pyramid. Yeah, so like the inside is like it, it's like oh god, I look at it's tilted, right? It's it tilted. Like, yeah, staring at the all the other rooms. Oh, that, that shit gets me disoriented, man. And now I'm like I'm not good with heights either, so I'm like oh fuck this, man, fuck this. And then there's the uh, fucking what you call <laughs> circus, circus, fuck that place. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah. We'll, yep, yep. That's we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see about me. We'll see about how your uh, uh, plans will go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Come back. We'll be like, I'm pregnant. Oh god. Yeah. You're all, you're all like, hey man, what happens in Vegas? stays in vegas man that's <laughs> that's what that's how the saying goes man all right so with that thank you very much uh this has been another fun episode and uh yeah we'll be back for another one hopefully uh we have stuff to talk about i'm sure we, we will we, you know M's are, M bias is already coming out so yeah um that should be a thing uh so yep again thank you very much and we will hope uh, we hope to see you all in the next one bye bye